Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in 15 minutes from my mark. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That was your 15-minute time check, stations.
Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in 10 minutes from my mark. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That was your 10-minute time check, stations.
Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the Big Ten Tournament in Omaha, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from Charles Schwab Field in downtown Omaha, it's semifinal Saturday with number six seeded Michigan coming from the loser's bracket to take on the third seeded Iowa Hawkeyes. Good morning and welcome to the broadcast booth in Omaha alongside my color analyst John Evans. I'm John Leo. Well, another Saturday meeting between these teams in the tournament, a story that was written last year in this very setting. But it was Michigan on the winner's side and Iowa coming from the loser's bracket. Ultimately, the Wolverines would beat Iowa in the if necessary game and end the Hawkeyes season. In 2023, the roles are reversed. Iowa has the advantage of the winner's side of the bracket while Michigan knocked out Indiana yesterday to get here. For the Hawkeyes, a win this morning, and you get to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. If we happen to lose this game, we'll play the if necessary game, which would <laughs> then be necessary to win this evening for Iowa to advance. It's simple for Michigan, win or go home and, and start their summer. It's the Hawkeyes and Wolverines, Iowa and Michigan part two from the Big Ten tournament in Omaha with first pitch coming in a bit. Well, these teams met already in this tournament in the first round on Tuesday. The Hawkeyes took it 13 to three in run rule fashion. No place to put him. Carousel will start moving. Yep, runners will be going on the full count pitch from Whitlock. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. He got him. What a pitch. What an... What a three outs for Jack Whitlock. Hello, my man. Let's go get some runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. How about that for Captain Jack? Three walks to load the bases, followed by three strikeouts, and Jack looks over to the dugout and he says, let's go, boys. The one, two, Sam shoots it into left, base hit. Wilmis scores. Here comes Tello. Come the on, throw baby. to the plate is not in time. Sammy Honar Hodge. Yes. Hawks lead three to one. Bases loaded for Braden. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch in the air to left. Hit well. Carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Braden Frazier. Grand slam. Boom. 2-1, Peterson hits it well, deep to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Peterson <laughs> hit it over the bullpen. Sammy P. Boom. Iowa then got the off day on Wednesday and in the winner's bracket against Indiana on Thursday. The Hawkeyes were able to get to this game today following a comeback thriller over the Hoosiers. Got a couple of strikeouts today. The third one would be a big one if he can get it right here. Two balls, two strikes with one out. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. Prompts the Iowa fans to cheer loudly. First pitch to Huck. Base hit to left. Into the corner, too. Tello scores. Here comes Honar. They're sending Seegers. He'll score, too. It's a bases clearing double. Kyle Huckstorf. Yeah! How about that for Huckstorf? Iowa 5-4. Huck at second. One ball, two strikes with one out. The pitch from Christofferson. Swing and a miss. Got him fishing. Hook, line, sinker, two down. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Christofferson on the rubber. Takes a deep breath. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Christofferson. Yes. He strikes out the side. It's five in a row for Will. One-two pitch from Hayden to Peterson. Here it comes. 
in the air, deep to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Sammy P. Boom. Yeah, we've had a pretty fun week here in Omaha. It's uh, We've made it to the weekend. And we've got a couple of games left to win. Let's take care of business today in the morning game against Michigan. That's what's on tap here. Iowa and Michigan win and advance to the championship game tomorrow. We won't talk about the outcome of a loss. Well, we'll have to get there at some point, but win yep. and let's get to Sunday. Let's just do that. We don't have to talk about that other <laughs> one. All right. Pre-game coverage continues right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Don't let life get in the way of what's most important. Visit shelterinsurance.com to learn more. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Iowa and Michigan this Saturday morning from Omaha. Let's welcome in my great color analyst, John Evans. John, good morning. <laughs> good morning. It's, uh, boy, what a nice morning. It, uh, the, the alarm going off uh, this morning wasn't the greatest thing I've ever had on a Saturday morning, but. Early morning guy? No. No. I mean, I, I'm fine. I'm just. I, not preferred. I, I, well, I'm a routine guy, and, and so you just kind of get moving and you get going, and, and I have a time that I do that, and um, this violated the time in a, in a forward way on a Saturday morning. Well, uh, you got to imagine it's probably a little bit of the same for the, for the athletes down in the field today. Hopefully Iowa manages that well. I, I think our, our sense is that uh, we're pretty laser focused, just like we have been for a majority of the season. Well, and we talked about uh, you know being down on the field uh, in pregame and in in infield, outfield, and, and the, the team was quieter than normal. And you know you could go, oh man, boy, are they nervous? And I just think the fact of the matter is, you know, at breakfast it was it was six thirty, six fifteen, six thirty this morning, and uh, you know other than other than Blake Garen being his usual bouncy self everybody else was a little bit more calmed in or calmed down and then as we got uh, as we got to the ballpark guys are just ready to go the, the coach's speech again speeches again this morning uh, made you feel like you could play and, and they're, they're they're ready it's been fun for us uh, interesting as we sit in the scout you don't want to take any you and i don't want to take anything away from the skill and the talent of the players but as we go through the scout i feel like we could almost uh, compete in there a little bit based on what knowledge is presented to us about the opponent. Feels like the, the obviously you know we we can't hit the ball as far as, as Sam Peterson does or as effectively, but uh, the coaches do a great job of putting the players in the position to succeed. You know to know what to look for, to know um, what their strengths are, and, and kind of play and work to those strengths, and and then the players. Um, this year have done a great job going out and executing that uh, well, 41 of 54 times. Yeah. 
it's pretty simple today. Uh, maybe not the execution or, or whatnot, but the, the path is simple. A win for the Hawkeyes in this morning game uh, will get us to the championship game tomorrow against either Maryland or Nebraska. Uh, if by chance you lose this morning game, we'll have to play Michigan again at five. So um, I, ne I don't necessarily want to be back here tonight. Uh, I don't know what plans we've got, but uh, I don't have baseball planned this evening. <laughs> no, the, the, well, what I would love to see is at five o'clock. I'd love to see Maryland and Nebraska in Game Two of their mm. of their series today. But uh, you know, it, it's it, if you really want to win the championship, you put yourself in the the absolute best position by winning right now. Rutgers showed that that doesn't necessarily matter last year, as Michigan had to play two games against us on Saturday and and came back to beat Rutgers on Sunday. So it's it's still not a guarantee. And and you heard the coaches tell the players that today. Michigan basically has to treat game one as somewhat of a, a bullpen game, but they're Big Ten athletes. They're at a Big Ten school like Michigan for a reason. And just because they haven't been called on a ton this year doesn't mean they can't get people out. And doesn't mean that we're not going to have to execute at, at our level and a high level to to win the first game and not have to worry about a second one. First pitch between Iowa and Michigan this morning, just about 20 minutes away as fans start to file in to Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. We'll step away. We'll talk with Coach Heller right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Semifinal Saturday in the morning game. Uh, we'll take on Michigan again. Joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a, a final thought on that comeback win over Indiana the other day. Man, just a, a really gutty, gritty performance um, by our team. Um, you know, beat a good Indiana team. Uh, beat, a, beat a really good pitcher in, in Sennard. Um he pitched great, pitched out of some jams. We, we, but we just kept, we just kept coming after him. Um, and it looked like one of those days where maybe you were snake bit a little bit. Things weren't going your way, you know. Um, weren't being rewarded when balls were hit hard, and then making some, some really, uh, some bad outs and tough situations where you didn't execute. But um, we just stuck, stuck with it, and then um, we, we. We were able to score a bunch of runs um, off two really good bullpen guys um, once they finally got uh, Sennard out of the game and played great defense. Uh, you know, Brody Brody gave us a, um, a decent start, you know, 
unfortunately, the runs they scored they didn't earn. Uh, that was disappointing. You know, they scored three runs off Brody, and and all three of them were free bases that you know they they didn't get on by hit on any of them. And, and they burned us. Um, you know, Brody doesn't give up much damage, but um, they hit the, the hard line drive uh, that, that that was just low enough uh, in this stadium that the wind didn't affect it, and it just really carried over over Braden Frazier's head in right field. And, uh, and that was really the only hard hit ball off of him the entire game. He did settle down the back end of his start and put some zeros up there and um, and, and 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 logged some innings, and that was important. And, you know, Jared Simpson comes in the game, and it, you know it didn't go as it didn't go as planned or as we would have liked on the on the mound. You know, Jared Jared uh, wasn't as sharp, uh, couldn't hit with his off speed. Um, had to get him out of the game fairly early, and then we made a we made a, a decision to go with um, Will Christofferson early in the sixth inning. Uh, we felt like that was the turning point in that game, and you don't always get it right, but we got it right this time. And Will came in and just. Um, just shut the door, and he was outstanding. Um, and then we scored some runs and broke out. And you know, Kyle Huxdorf had a had a big a big triple to clear the bases. But before that, you know, we had a bunch of two out hits. You know, Raider Tello, Ben Wilmus got a hit up the middle um, that was really big um, that, that that put us ahead. Sam Honar had another big hit, and then um, you know Peterson with the three run homer and the in the eighth to give us that insurance and then we already had it was a close ball game at that point we already had Whitlock um, getting ready to go for the ninth and then hindsight you know we would have probably not used him had um, we know we were going to score those runs but he was already hot so you might as well get him in the game and make sure that nothing happens and he did that He, he shut the door and uh, it was a nice win and puts us in a great situation today, uh, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, it will not be easy. I mean, this team, Michigan, has been a nemesis of ours in the conference tournament for the last 10 years. You know, we've had our day and, and got them sometimes, but they've got us a few more. And um, last year we were sitting in the other dugout and, and had to beat them twice to get to the championship. And we got them in game one. and. Uh, you know, we didn't get it done in game two, and they went on to win the tournament. So, ideally for us, we get a great start out of Ty Langenberg today, and our offense comes out and performs like they're capable. And um, you know, we 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 take care of business here this morning, and uh, we get to go rest and watch the games on TV, and hope they go two games and yeah. and get ready to go for a for a fun championship day um, tomorrow. But all that. Um, is determined will be determined here soon on, on how we come out and play. Everybody's talking about the the pitching uh, when you come out of the losers bracket. You know you run out of pitching by the time you get to the weekend. Uh, but our offense has been so good, so consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the pitching in the bullpen. I just want to talk about Kyle Hugstore for a second because uh, we'd mentioned him maybe sputtering a little bit towards the end of the year. What a confidence play for him to hit that double into the gap and then to do it with two outs. Have you ever seen uh, a team that hits so well, so productive with two outs, coach? Well, you know they've been the best one probably since we've been here at Iowa, and 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 the reason is because they don't they don't they don't worry about themselves. They just they bought into the system and they bought into the plan, the plan to dominate the zone. Um, you know, to, to we have a really Marty puts together a really solid plan for every pitcher we face. Uh, they do the work. They watch the video. Um, they 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 don't chase a lot, and and when you do those things, you make that when you make the pitcher throw it over the plate, you're going to get pitch to hits, pitches to hit, and a lot of times, a lot of times, a pitcher he may spot up on you, pitch one, pitch two, but the odds of the odds of a college pitcher and even a pro pitcher throwing three pitches in an at bat exactly where he wants to is rare, and and and. <laughs> Excuse me, and believing, all right, I'm 0-2 or 1-2. Now the odds go in my favor because he's not going to throw that third one exactly where it is. And when he misses, I'm going to hammer him and stick and, and and just not getting caught up 
in, in, in stuff that you have no control over or changing your plan or bailing on the plan just because you got crossed up on a pitch or it didn't go quite your way. You know, it's, a, it's an odds game and a percentage game, and uh, if you stick to those numbers, it, they're, they're always going to come back to you in your favor. And, and this team has done as good a job uh, with that as any we've had, and that's why you see the consistency up and down the line. I mean, plus, plus, let's face it. I mean, these are talented kids. I mean, this is a uh, a well put together team, uh, a well planned out recruiting uh, philosophy. You know that we've been going after for a few years. We've been trying really hard to to to, to improve the quality one through nine of the position players, and still not still not um, take a hit on the pitching side. And, and this team, this team has a great blend of speed and power, and, and that's another big part of this, John, is that um, the speed really helps us. Um, I mean, they have to adjust corners in. You get more hits that way because we have four guys that can bunt on you but can also hit it out of the ballpark. And, um, you know, just tough kids, unselfish kids, humble kids, and when you get that, um, you get kids that can do special things and overachieve. And, that's the goal every year is for us to come out and overachieve, and these guys have, have just performed awesomely all season. Talking about head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from semifinal Saturday here in Omaha. Okay, a couple of things. We're taking on Michigan today. They beat Indiana uh, last night and, and really took it to the Hoosiers. Are you surprised to see that it's Michigan in this game uh, rather than Indiana? No, I'm not surprised. Um, not surprised at all because... They've, they've got a lot of really good players. I mean, I think I think Tracy would tell you this, you know, I mean, his, it's his first year. Um, you know, Coach Backish was there, had a strong culture and a strong program, and you're seeing what he's doing at Clemson. You know, when he left, several players left. You know, a lot of some of the recruits left. He walked into a, a situation that was tumultuous because of that. And, um, it, you know, he was thrown in, thrown in the fire, you know, so to speak, and I think he would tell you that um, this team has the players to, to, to potentially win the league. I mean, and, and, and the way they played uh, a good chunk of the season, a lot of people thought they might win the league, and, 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 and they had, a, they had a, fa a schedule that favored them uh, as far as who they played in the conference, and then right up until the last few weeks, they were right there in the mix. You know, if you go back and look, you know, it was the last two weeks that, got, that, that they struggled. They lost a couple games in Minnesota, then they got swept at Ohio State. Uh, but up until that time, they were they were right there to win the conference. Um, this team has a lot of really talented kids on it, and a lot, really, a lot of talented players. And um, the scary thing when you play them is that um, they have underachieved, I guess. You know, and I'm not saying that in a negative co connotation, but I think Tracy would tell you that they have the players, you know, to go out and beat anybody. And when they're hot, especially, which they've gotten hot since our game, game one, and, and they've swung the bat really well. Um, hopefully, they used a lot of those hits against Indiana yeah. yesterday, <laughs> and that uh, Ty Ty Langenberg will, will have a lot to say about what they what they do today. But we know they're more than capable, and we talked about this before game one. I mean, there's a bunch of guys in that dugout over there that were here when they. That were playing when they knocked us out last season, mm -hmm. and 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 that that dugout has a bunch of guys in it that are used to winning, have won championships, have won tournament championships, have been to regional tournaments the last three years. Um, you know, whenever you play a team that has the experience like that, it's it's not going to be easy. And that was the message to the team this morning. This will not be easy. You can throw all the pitching out, this that they played this because. You're going to have to go out and get it done on the field. I mean, and we saw what Walsh did for Nebraska last night. Stepped up, complete game shutout. I mean, all they have guys capable of doing that. And we just, if we if we go out, if we go out um, overconfident and, and 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 change change who we are, I mean, they'll beat us. And and that was the message. And what we talked about at practice yesterday, last night before they went to bed, and what we talked about this morning. I mean, we have a good plan. And, and if we execute the plan, we'll be fine. But if we do anything other than that, it's going to be a long day. 16 weeks, Coach. Your, your team has stayed laser-focused. Uh, wouldn't expect them to break that trend today and, and going to need it to be the case because you're going to see probably a new pitcher almost every inning for <laughs> Michigan uh, today. Well, that's exactly right, John. And um, No, I, I feel 
I feel good about where we're at. I feel good about how our guys go about their business. And, um, you know, I, 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 I just would be shocked if we don't come out and at least give a great effort today. How about the challenges, Coach, of playing at 9 a.m.? I think we were up before the sun today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the, the 515 wake-up call. Uh, um, you know, a lot of people think you, <laughs> there's so much that goes on before a baseball game. You know, you're, you're at the ballpark a little more than two hours um, before game time um, to get to get all the, the other work done. And uh, it was an early morning, and, and the great thing for us is that we did have a day to, to rest. We had a nice practice, got them in, got them out, got our work done, got our plan together, had a good meal. Um, everybody was in bed, hopefully early. I know a lot of them probably had a hard time sleeping or getting to sleep. I know I did. Yeah. Um, but right now, I mean, hey, Sun's out. It feels awesome to be at the ballpark. The, the, the temperature is fantastic, and sun's shining. And um, you know we're not freezing to death, <laughs> so, which is a, another great thing. Uh, and um, just a really fun day. I know we're going to have a. I know we're going to have. Even though it's a 9 a.m. game, we've had great crowds. Uh, we haven't had the most optimal times to maximize our crowds, and that's that's a little disappointing because you know Nebraska got the the marquee games and. Um, and their fans really showed out for them. But uh, we've had great crowds, and uh, the Hawk fans will be here today. You you watch. They'll, they'll be here today. And um, I just really, really believe our guys will go out and play well. And, and if we take care of business, you'll see 12, 14,000 Hawkeye fans here tomorrow. Sunday at 2 would be a pretty optimal time for Championship Sunday. That'd be all right it, uh, it, it with would. us. <laughs> it, would for, it would for sure. And then, you know, um, uh, with, with the news that our – our boss and leader, um, you know, Gary Barda, uh, is is retiring. Um, it'd be it'd be really awesome if we could if we could put together a couple games here and, and send Gary out with a championship. All right, coach. So before we let you go, some keys to victory so that we can get to that championship Sunday tomorrow. Well, it's going to start out like always on the mound with Ty, and um, we, we've talked about it all season long. When he hits with all of his pitches, he's he's really good. Um, and, and especially needs to hit with his slider, which has come and gone at times during the season. And uh, for a while there, it was really going well um, after we bumped him back to Sunday and um, wasn't hitting with it as well against Northwestern, uh, but enough. And then um, his changeup, you hope that he's getting the good speed differential where he's getting the drop on it because the changeup against this team is, is what he's going to need to have. Throw that slider for a strike. Uh, hopefully his fastball command is there. That's been the one thing that's been somewhat consistent with for Ty. And he's well-rested. That's a good thing. And a well-rested Ty usually means that he's going to be living in that 91 to 94, which gives him some margin of error, even if he's not locating as well. Um, we haven't talked a whole lot about this, but you know our defense has been outstanding um, here the last five weeks. And playing great defense today on uh, the morning game and not having any lapses uh, is going to be important. And then offensively, just coming out and grinding, grinding every at-bat out. Make them earn everything they get. Um, the kids that they're throwing that haven't thrown a lot, make life miserable for them. You know, don't chase. Uh, make them throw it over the plate. Take advantage of free bases. Uh, you know, the starter man has, uh, he's, a more, he's been more of a midweek guy, but they have used him in a, out of the pin um, a lot more the last month in Big Ten games. Um, more than capable. Um, good arm, a little funky with a downhill plane, kind of like Sennard, but, but not quite, but, but similar with the downhill plane. Um, pretty good slider. Um, he it says he throws a slider and a curveball. Um, they kind of morph more into one, but they do have some, some depth to it. And um, But he doesn't throw them a ton for a strike. So us being disciplined and making him throw it over the plate is going to be super, super important um, to start this game out. But it'd be great to come out and, and, and the first inning and, and do what we did with Sennard. You know, get the bases loaded, nobody out, but then cash in with a good, you know, with, with three or four runs in the first inning. That would be... You know the perfect scenario, but we all know how it goes. Yeah. But that's how, that's the keys for me is is us just no matter who we see from them, grind them out and make them throw it over the plate. <coughs> and then once Ty once Ty's start is over, um, 
the bullpen has to throw strikes. Coach, I always enjoy talking to you, but I hope this is the last time I talk to you today, and we'll uh, catch up tomorrow. How about that? I agree with that, John. Let's, <laughs> let's, um, let's, here's to having a, a, a great 9 a.m. game. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thanks. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from semifinal Saturday in Omaha. First pitch coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. <laughs> At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Starting lineups and first pitch from Omaha on semifinal Saturday coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. It's time for today's starting lineups. We'll go first with Michigan from the loser's bracket, 28 and 27, led off by Cody Jeffress, followed by Tito Flores and Ted Burton. Joey Velasquez, Mitch Voigt, Jack Van Remortel in the middle of the order, 7, 8, 9, Dylan Stanton, Jonathan Kim, Gabe Sotrace. And we'll get to the defensive starters in a second, but the starting pitcher for Iowa today is Ty Langenberg. Five and three on the season with a 450 ERA. He's thrown 64 innings, given up 74 hits, 34 runs, 32 earned, 28 walks, 71 strikeouts. Opponents getting him at 295. First pitch from Ty is high and out to Cody Jeffress, their shortstop left-handed hitter. Michigan pounded out 18 hits yesterday to beat Indiana and get to this spot this morning, 2-0 to Jeffress. Hawkeyes going with Ty Langenberg to get the start this morning. 2-0 pitch in there for a strike, 2-1. Ty's probably got the most experience in this position for Iowa. And, and won this game last year for Iowa when the roles were reversed and it was a must win for Iowa. 2-1 pitch from Langenberg, hit foul to the third base side. Great crowd on hand this morning, like, like Coach Heller predicted, a lot of black and gold behind that third base dugout. Many folks sitting in the shade, but starting to make their way down into the sun. Gorgeous day in Omaha. The 2-2 from Langenberg, high and out. He spins off the mound. It's a full count. Ty's first breaking ball there. It started with four straight fastballs. Lost control of the breaking ball right away. Jeffers right on top of the plate, toes on the inside part of the box. The 3-2. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Out number one. Langenberg gets the strikeout. Went right back to the breaking ball. Wasn't a, wasn't a great pitch, but showed well enough. Jeffers chased it out. Hawks get the first out. Defensively for Iowa, Dorigi's at first, Honar at second, Seegers at short, Raider Tello over at the hot corner at third. In the outfield, left to right, Peterson, Huxdorf, and Frazier doing the catching for Iowa like he has a majority of the season, almost all of it, Cade Moss. Yeah, Moss has been a warrior back there. He's been called on a lot. And 
and has really responded both with the bat and defensively. A little bit of a shakeup in the lineup for Michigan. Tito Flores batting in the second spot today. A swing and a miss on the first pitch from Langenberg. Well, their DH today is Mitch Voigt, who played third base the first time against Iowa. But he pitched yesterday and threw almost 100 pitches. So tough ask for him to go back out to third base and throw all across the diamond after the, the great outing he had against Indiana. Right. Flores hit a solo home run off of us on Tuesday, but the game was pretty much in hand at that point. 1-1 pitch from Langenberg. Inside almost hit him 2-1. Ty's just having a little trouble with that breaking ball every time he's tried to throw it. Uh, it was fortunate enough to the left-hander to be well outside, but they're coming inside to Flores. Busts him right in the hands. Almost on the inside corner there. Brought it back a little bit more, but it also floated high. 3-1. You talk about Ty when he's successful. All pitches are working, still trying to figure out the off speed. 3-1, inside corner, called strike. That'll bring Flores back into the box as Grady Smith called it a strike. Flores was taken off for first base. And another full count early in the game. We'll see what Ty's got up his sleeve right now. Three balls, two strikes. Out of the wind up the pitch. Ground ball left side, backhanded by Seegers. Long throw from the hole, got him! Michael Seegers, what a great play there. Good positioning from the Hawk defense. Allowed Michael to get good range over there as it was in that short third hole. Set his back foot and just laced it across the diamond for the out. Ted Burton coming to the box. He's their second baseman, good hitter. In the three spot for Michigan today. Two up, two down. Langenberg's battled in the first inning. Out of the windup, first pitch to the righty. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of Cade Moss. Nothing in one. Burton's probably their best all-around attacker on offense. 301, but also with some power. 14 doubles, 13 home runs. Langenberg's 0-1 delivery. Ground ball right side and into right field. For a two-out single for Ted Burton. That'll bring up Joey Velazquez. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Almost got that 1-2-3 inning, but... Burton will get on with two outs, bringing up the right fielder, Joey Velasquez. He is a left-handed hitter. First pitch from Langenberg out of the stretch. Outside corner, strike one. It was a good pitch from Ty, but it was just a better piece of hitting from Burton as the ball was low and away on the breaking ball. Honar was in the shift, and Burton didn't try to do too much with it and just rolled it through the open, open right side. 0-1, fouled back to the net, to the Iowa on-deck circle over there to the left. It's nothing in two. See if Ty can finish off the at-bat here. How do you feel about a change-up, John? He's gone with a couple of fastballs to Velasquez. Mind seeing that with the left-hander. Here's the 0-2. Just off the plate outside. Really good pitch from Ty, but Velasquez able to hold off. I went with, uh, went with a slider instead. Just missed low and away there. Couldn't get the chase. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Pitch from Ty, high and out. That's another ball. Evening the count at two. Shows fastball up. Maybe he comes back now with something either low and away or tries to bust him low and in. Langenberg versus Velasquez. Long pause from Ty. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a foul tip. Just barely got a piece of it. Mm. Went low and away, but maybe caught a little bit more plate than he wanted. Velasquez was able to stay alive. Velasquez with 37 starts. He's played in 47 games. Here's the pitch outside. Runner takes off for a second. Throw down, not in time. And Burton steals a bag, just his fourth of the season. A yeah, tough pitch for Ty or for uh, Cade to throw there. Another full count, John. Pitch Good. count getting up there for Ty early. Another pitch well down and away. Burton had a great jump on Ty as he was trying to vary the holds. Here's a 3-2. Hit well to right. Frazier moving towards the line. And this one will hook into the seats. Foul. Pulled down that line. That's actually a really good pitch from Ty. That's a breaking ball. And I cut more of the plate. Track, Trackman might be off just a little bit. It looked like it was more on the outside part of the plate. But looking at the replay on Big Ten Network, it 
caught a lot more, a lot more center there, and he was able to rip it foul. So. We'll do it again with another full count pitch. Langenberg to Velasquez. Here it comes. Swing and a check swing. He went around. Langenberg got him. Really nicely done there. Battle back from Ty. Took a lot of pitches, but he got through the inning, and that's the, that's the most important part now, to go pile up some runs against the bullpen game here for Michigan. Nothing doing for the Wolverines. Ben Wilmus, Sam Peterson, Brennan Derigi will get the first crack at Michigan this morning. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the first inning in Omaha. Michigan got one hit in the top, but no runs to show for it. And so Iowa has an opportunity to get on the board first here this morning. Ben Wilmus, the designated hitter, will lead things off, followed by Sam Peterson and Brennan Derigi. Middle of the order for the Hawkeyes today, Raider Tello, Sam Honar, Michael Seegers. 7-8-9, Kyle Huxdorf, Braden Frazier, and Cade Moss. And the starting pitcher for Michigan is a right-hander, Brandon Mann. 7.53 ERA and 12 appearances for the, for the Wolverines. 14 and a third innings, 14 hits, 13 runs. 12 of those were earned. Eight walks, so struggles a little with command. Six strikeouts, opponents hitting him at 2.46. Fastball is going to be upper 80s, might touch 90. Um, and then, as you heard Coach Heller say in the pregame, he's got a... a Slurvy gets a curveball slider, probably a little bit of both. It's got 11 to 5 movement, so it's not kind of that traditional straight down over the top curveball, but really be important for the Hawkeyes to make him throw strikes. Make everybody in this Michigan bullpen come in and have a career day and see if, if they can do that over the course of four, five, six pitchers and beat you. Mann is a member of the Michigan football team, a walk on quarterback, apparently. So uh, uses the arm a lot. He just operates out of the stretch. And so Wilmus gets into the box. First pitch to Ben is in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Iowa wearing their black tops today with Iowa spelled out in gold across the chest. Gold numbers on the backside. Gold numbers on the left hip as well. White baseball pants for the Hawks today. A one pitch way outside. Ball one. Gold caps in the field for Iowa with the black bill and the black block eye. Michigan, a little bit of gamesmanship out of them. They're wearing their blue uniforms with Mays, Michigan spelled out across the chest. So from our perspective up here, looking very similar to the Hawkeyes as Wilmus sends it foul in the air down the right field line. Yeah, they were uh, they were supposed to wear a contrasting color to the Hawkeyes, but decided that it was their lucky uniform and they. Uh, showed up without a backup uniform and Big Ten didn't send them back to the hotel. So we're, we're wearing uh, very similar looking uniforms from up here. One, two to Wilmus, that breaks high, two and two. That's fine, I think they wore these on Tuesday. And after all, they are Michigan, so. Didn't and, seem very lucky for them Tuesday. No, didn't. Two balls, two strikes to Wilmus, here's the pitch. That gets to the backstop, full count. This pitcher for Michigan, Brandon Mann, the freshman, has given up an earned run in each of his last three appearances. He doesn't make it very far. Like you said, John, his career high is two innings. He's done it twice, once against Nebraska in April, once against Ohio State just a few days ago. Ball four to Ben Wilmus. Iowa's got the leadoff hitter on in the first. Yeah, if any, if any Michigan pitcher goes two innings or more today, 
Um, no matter how long today goes against Michigan, it'll yep. be it'll be a stretch and it'll be a really good outing. You know, we talk a lot about Hawkeye win, push, or Michigan win. Any of these Michigan pitchers go over three innings or over two innings, that, that gets to be a Michigan win. So Iowa just needs to keep grinding out at bats like that, keep making these pitchers throw strikes and do work. Sam Peterson is the Hawkeye hitter now. Man struggling to throw strikes. That's in the dirt. One of the stats on him is that when runners get on, teams hit him around up near 400. Yeah, they hit him hard. He's he's quick to the plate, but with his attention split between a runner and a and a batter, he gets uh, he gets a little wild and and gets uh, uh, then when he really focuses on the plate, he comes right to the middle. And for a guy like Petey, that. Uh, that could spell good things. Two balls, no strikes here for Peterson. Man's been wild, but light probably green for PD. Not on that one, though. It's red. Pitches in the dirt. Throw down to second base. Wilmus is going to be out. You got a very poor read on that and a late break, and Wilmus is caught stealing. Boy, one of the things that, that was talked about in the scout this morning was um, balls in the dirt, you've got a chance because Sotrace tends to keep his head down. But this one, he did a really good job. His head stayed down, but he did a great job of keeping the ball just right in front of him. Not a good read from Wilmus that it didn't really get away from him. Hawks let Michigan off the hook. 3-0 pitches outside for ball four. So we'll walk again a couple of free bases. We give one right back. I don't know if Ben got the best jump on that. By the time I looked up, he was just then taken off to second base. Well, he just didn't. He, he thought the ball got got further away from the catcher than it did. And we're already going to have a mound visit because, again, not not to bring up <laughs> bad Hawkeye juju, but, uh, you know, last year Brody Brett got asked to make the start um, in the second game of the of the series against Michigan, and, and, you know, it was a new experience for him. And now here again with Mann, you've got a true freshman out there, hasn't thrown a lot of innings. This is a huge deal for him, and he's got to come out and throw strikes and a lot to ask. Michigan's got somebody throwing in the bullpen. Horweedle's getting loose down there. We already saw him. We saw him. He threw yesterday, too. So, again, not a guy that, that's going to come in and get, you know, he's not going to eat up two, three, four innings for them. So they're really just going to try to piece this together. We've talked a lot about it in different weekends about Hawkeye approach at the plate is how do you break the chain? Yeah. And, and right now it's. It, you know, it, instead of having three or four links in a traditional weekend game, this chain might have six links, seven links. But if you're the Hawkeye hitters, you just want to keep breaking it. Make it be 10 or 11 links, and you like your chances. In man's 12 appearances, Michigan has lost 10 of the games that he's pitched in. I know that's not a lot considering he, he throws an inning or two max, but not a great record when man gets into the game. I like where your head's at. Yeah. Got to pull something out of these notes. First pitch to Brennan Derigi's a strike on the outside corner. Peterson's at first, one out in the inning. Iowa just a little bit too aggressive there early on, but a couple of walks already. See if we can get one in play off of Man. Here's the 0-1. Derigi hits it foul to the left side. Nothing in two. Look for Brennan as we get to the weekend to turn his week around. He's on the way there, had a better game against Indiana than he did against Michigan on Tuesday. Had a better game, you know, maybe getting acclimated to the to the batter's eye out there, able to see the ball a little bit better. Uh, so maybe he's uh, he's due. 0-2 oh, from Mann. Breaking ball high and out. Ball one. Here's with two strikes where you really have to maintain discipline because, you know, if, if Mann goes trying to pick off edges, it's not likely he's going to be able to do it. So, you know, he'll either miss wide or when he misses, he might miss back in the middle of the plate. And so if you're ready, you can drive one. One, two, Brennan chased it. Did I just ask for a little discipline? Ooh. <laughs> I haven't seen Derigi swing at a pitch like that. That one was low and in. Would have had to golf it off his shoelaces to hit it. And all of a sudden, two down here. Peter Tello. Tello, the Hawkeye third baseman in the cleanup spot today. A lot of pop in that bat for Tello. You'd like to say Raiders had a good week. He's had a good season, up over 300. Righty on righty matchup. Peterson at first. Fastball low to Raider. Ball one. Yeah, I really want Raider to... We talked about this a little yesterday when he had the when he had the walk that kind of got, or two days ago when he had the walk to kind of get things going. Show some patience here. Swings at the next pitch, high fly ball to right center. 
Kim is over, the center fielder. He's got it for the third out. Is this my reverse whammy everything day? Yeah, yeah I don't know. We better be careful uh, what we start to predict here. It just felt like the, the caught stealing turned the, the tide in that inning after drawing a couple of uh, walks, John. Yeah, I, the, you know, you, you like the aggressiveness. That part was good. Just to, didn't get a didn't get a good read on it and uh, and got thrown out. But um, want to see the hitters be uh, be particular. Good swing from uh, from Raider though. It was it was in the in the middle to the inside part of the plate. So not a terrible p terrible pitch to swing at. Scoreless after one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Mitch Voigt will lead off the second inning for the Wolverines. And he swings and misses at the first pitch from Ty Langenberg. Voigt did it all against Indiana yesterday, didn't he? He was fantastic. Five and a third innings, got the win, threw 100 pitches, swings and misses there, 0-2, and went four for five from the plate. So, heck of a day. The Wolverines had 18 hits, beat Indiana 13-6. to Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Langenberg made him look silly on that one. This is actually a great matchup for Ty. You know, it's a team that, uh, you know, as we saw again in scout this morning, likes to likes to expand the strike zone, likes to swing the bat. So if Ty can if Ty can hit with all of his pitches and there, you know, he really worked he really worked the the off speed stuff. If he can hit with that, he can get Michigan to expand and kind of eliminate what's part of been the problem for Ty is getting hit in the barrel. He can, he can miss the barrel by really not aiming at the middle of the plate. Another right-hander in the box for the Wolverines now, Jack Van Remortel. First pitch right down Main Street from Ty. Van Remortel steps out of the box and nods his head. 0-1. Here's the pitch from Ty. Swing and a foul ball up towards us, John, over to the right. Oh, man, that... You set us in the wrong section yesterday, I, or we, we had a made chance it to at the, a foul ball. We made it to the second inning. I wonder how long we'd get today. I mean, I am an eight-year-old that wants a foul ball. <laughs> 0-2 oh, from Langenberg. Swing and a oh, miss. Fourth strikeout for Langenberg already. He's dealing. Ty Langenberg, and, and now doing it very efficiently as he's been cleaner. You know, no three-two counts. You know, just. Get ahead and then execute your pitch. You hear Coach McGrath say that all the time. Execute one pitch at a time. Boy, Ty threw uh, two batters here in the second inning. They had a had a night and day inning to the first. Dylan Stanton is up. He's their third baseman today. There's a slider low and out to start things off. And he had a career day yesterday. You talk about a guy that came into this, came into the game hitting 180 something, six hits on the season, had four hits himself yesterday. Was again just low and out. He started six games, played in 35, so just lightly used. But to John's point from earlier, Voigt not going to be throwing it a lot today from his starting position at third after he threw so many pitches yesterday. Here's a foul ball straight below us. It's two and one. Yeah, we were over here for the Michigan-Indiana game, and John kind of set me up. He made me pick where to sit. 
and then we just didn't get any luck with anything close with a foul ball. Oh, we had two close, one section either side. You just picked the wrong one. Two and two after a swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah, I just can't quite get it right. We Brian Ray, the great, the great Hawkeye photographer, kind of messed you up a little bit too because he wanted shade, so we had to sit up a little higher. Yeah. That, uh, and I did feel a little guilty trying to tackle a 10-year-old to get a ball. <laughs> Here's a 2-2 two -two from Ty, way inside. Full count now. Yeah, I uh, a little bit afraid of uh, our competition for a foul ball coming our way uh, uh, last night. Here comes a 3-2. Hit foul over to our left this time. I don't know how much I would have battled you for a foul, but I might have let you have it yesterday. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be a pretty awkward broadcast today. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just have the ball sitting right between us. Yeah. Neener, neener, neener. 3-2 <laughs> two from Langenberg. Way up and in, ball four. Michigan's got a base runner now in the second. It's going to be really hard to be your color guy if every time I say something, I reverse jinx our guys. You know, talking about how smooth Ty was, no three balls, and, and then all of a sudden uh, walks, uh, walks Stanton there on, on a 3-2 pitch. Right. Ty's done a nice job today getting the first two outs of the inning. It's been the third, uh, uh, third batter, rather, in each inning that's gotten on. We'll see Jonathan Kim. Left-handed hitter, center fielder. Good start to the at-bat here, but Ty just missed outside. Kim batted third for Michigan on Tuesday, all the way down to eight right now. Maybe they're spacing out their order. Langenberg taking a deep breath. Quick move over to first base. That'll make Stanton dive back in there. Stanton lightly used, doesn't have a stolen base attempt on the season. Kim has... 14 extra base hits, slugs at 476, so a little pop in the bat there. Way out in front of the change up there from Langenberg, a swing and a miss, one and one. Okay, he's another one of those high strikeout guys, though. 37 strikeouts and 143 at bat, so if Ty can kind of get ahead, he can get Kim to expand the zone. Tapped foul to the right side, and just like you mentioned there, all of a sudden Ty is ahead. One and two with two outs. We're scoreless in the top of the second. Langenberg's just got that calm veteran presence right now. Looks in for the sign from Moss. He's got it. Here comes the one, two. Outside. Good pitch, but it's a ball. Two and two. You know, don't know a ton about Stanton with his limited playing time, but they did put Burton on the move with 2 2 on the 2 2 pitch. So see if they create some action here. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Langenberg up to five strikeouts through two innings. He's got a great defense behind him, but he hasn't had to use him too much yet. Go to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Michigan and Iowa. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Sam Honar, Michael Seegers, Kyle Huxdorf do up for Iowa. In the bottom of the second, how productive have those guys been this week? Honar, Seegers, and Huxdorf. Done a really nice job. You, know, you maybe saw a little bit in the first inning of, of you know, pressing. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to do anything um, you, you know, that, that you're not capable of doing to beat Michigan today. You know, you handled them the other day. You know, maybe Wilmus getting that jump is, hey, I want to I wanna do something exciting. Dorigi chasing a pitch down at, down at his ankle that he doesn't pitch. You know, stick to your plan, stick to your process, um, and, and see what happens here. So 
Just, uh, just kind of got to work that jitters out. It's nine. You know, it was nine o'clock when we got started, so just kind of work through those. So you saw Ty had a much better second inning. He's got the calming presence, and maybe that needs a transfer just a little bit to the offense as Honar is in the box. First pitch strike on the low outside corner. Sam had squared to bunt, thought about it. They've got a massive shift on for him with three infielders to the right of the bag at second. Third baseman playing even with the bag, maybe creeping forward a bit. Mann is out for another inning of work, throws it low and into Sam. I just saw the replay of that first strike. Holy cow. Pretty expanded there. Um, slightly. It was a breaking ball, but it was uh, it was stretchy. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch from Mann. Honar hits a swinging bunt, a spinner on the ground to third, trying to beat it out. Throw to first is in time. Honar is out number one. It's a fastball down right in the middle of the plate. Sam was just way out in front of it and kind of cue balled it out there. It took him by surprise a little bit. Stanton did a nice job playing in, made it easy. I think if he'd have been at a more normal depth, I think Sam hits that ball with two strikes. I think he might beat it out. Sure. But, uh, with him in inside the bag or even with the bag, was able to come up and make the play. Iowa shortstop Michael Seegers in the box, trying to get things started with one out in the second. First pitch that he sees is high and out. Michael had a good game against Michigan on Tuesday. was two for three, and he scored three runs. Seems good. Yes. Wouldn't mind if he uh, got our first run across here today. Very patient hitter as he's watched a couple go by now. Both out of the zone. It's 2-0. and oh. But look at that average for Seegers, up over 315, right below 320 now at 3. 2-0 to Seegers, outside corner strike one. Michael, an extra base hit threat as well, especially that triple. He's got four on the season. Left fielder playing him pretty deep, isn't he? Really is, but Michael could get it. Good pitch there, another fastball on the outside part of the plate. There, he could be, get it into... Get into left center field, but you see the center fielder is relatively shallow. You know, it'll be, again, with Michael, it's going to be more of a line drive. He's not going to hit the towering home run or anything. But Here's the 2-2 two -two to Seegers. In the air to right. Velazquez, he'll come forward a little bit towards the line as well. And he's got it for the second out. Hawkeyes still looking for their first hit. Have had some base runners due to walks, but Mann has done a good job for the Wolverines on the mound. Michael went up above the strike zone there to get it. And, you know, we talked about this yesterday, uh, you know, watching the Nebraska-Michigan uh, State game. You know, you think, oh, they're getting a bullpen game a little bit. You know, how long will Will Walsh be able to go? Yeah. Uh, will Walsh just kept going, and, and Michigan State wasn't patient, didn't really expand his, his pitch count at all. You know, at one point, I think it was the seventh inning, he got through with like 75 pitches. And that misses low and away, and all of a sudden Walsh ends up uh, with a complete game four hitter against uh, what looks to me to be one of, you know, Maryland's probably the best hitting team, but one of the best hitting teams in the conference. Kyle Huxdorf at the plate for Iowa now. Another fly ball, this one into foul territory to the right side. Van Remorta will give it a look, and it'll get just barely over the half wall there and into the front row of the seats. Foul ball. That was catchable. He can he, you know, as an outfielder or, or as an infielder on the edges, you want to run to the edge and so that you can get there before the ball gets there. He just kind of kept drifting, kept looking, kept drifting, and probably had a chance to catch it if he would have just kind of ran over to the railing. One ball and one strike to the Hawkeye center fielder. The pitch to Huxdorf. Ground ball left side snagged by Stanton. He'll throw it across for the third out. Iowa goes down one, two, three in the second. All right, on to the third we go, scoreless with Michigan. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, 
or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately. Then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Nine one two coming to the plate for Michigan in the third inning. Gabe Sotrace will lead things off, and then it'll be Jeffress and Flores again. Langenberg's been good. He's settled in nicely. I'm sorry, I'm still baffled. I'm jealous by the the forehead Oreo thing. That's the second winner we've seen. It's just. I just don't know how you do that. Yeah, well, there's a, a pack of Oreos in our convenience store over at the hotel, John. Maybe you'll have to try it out later if we can pull this off. We'll give her a go. But, <laughs> but yeah, to your point, Langenberg has been, uh, you know, he was certainly better in the second inning. He's He's been able to get Michigan to, to expand the strike zone um, when he's been able to get ahead. You know, when he's been able to throw strike one, he's been able to then execute his pitch. So, you know, want to see him start that right away here with the number nine hitter and, and uh and keep right on keep right on cruising through five strikeouts for Ty through two innings righty on righty matchup now with so trace the catcher in the box he fouled off the first pitch so trace batting just over 200 a one pitch slowing out backhand stop by Moss behind the plate one and one yeah, Ty was at 40 pitches through two innings. I mean, 62%, which was great, but uh, man, just at 27. Swing and a miss on the 1-1. And funny enough, only throwed 48% strike, so Iowa not doing damage when he comes in the zone and yeah. not really creating enough problems when he's out of the zone. Foul ball to the right side into the second deck. Langenberg appears to have found the slider a little bit better uh, than he had it in the first. Yeah, he's got the mix going a little bit more now. Don't want to see him catch quite that much plate with a fastball in one and two, though. Ground ball, left side. This is foul near the camera well down the line outside of the Iowa dugout. Well, Michigan's done a nice job grinding out some long at-bats, though, with the exception of a couple of strikeouts here or there. Each batter has really seen at least you know, four or five pitches. One, two, ground ball left side. Tello will backhand it in fair territory. Long throw. Got him at first base. That's a great play. Sotrace kind of hooked that and didn't hit it very hard. So it was kind of hooked right over the bag and took Tello into foul territory. So had a really long throw and didn't hit it very hard. Sotrace, the catcher, was hustling down the line. Got him by just a, just a beat there. Ty's done a good job against leadoff hitters today. He's got all three Michigan hitters out to lead off every inning. We'll go to the top of the order now with Jeffress. First pitch strike on the outside corner. Ty struck him out back in the first. I had to come battling back as Jeffress really crowds the plate. Another strike dealt by Langenberg there. Brought it in a little bit more and lower, but still on that outside corner of the plate. Nothing in two. See where Ty goes with this now. Jeffers is just kind of a poke hitter, left fielder. Peterson better be ready here. Ty's got options. The 0-2, low and out, one and two. Actually, that was the, that was just the changeup. Kind of threw a firm changeup there, just missed away. A ball and two strikes. The pitch from Langenberg. Fly ball to shallow left. Peterson, like you called, John, is coming forward. He's got it. Two down. Maybe I'm catching my game a little bit but more now here as we get into the third yeah, inning. As the sun starts to come up, uh, picking up the pace there. Two down in the Michigan third. All right, see if Ty can save himself a couple pitches here and, and finish up the inning here. He's at 50 right now. And he, like he's done in the first two innings, he's got the first two outs, and it's been the third hitter of every inning to this point that has found a way on. Ty trying to break that trend right now against Tito Flores. Righty on righty. Fastball at the knees. Good start from Langenberg. Flores had the home run and a triple back on Tuesday against the Hawkeyes. And was very pleased with himself on both of them. This one is hit well to right. Frazier moving towards the line into the corner, and it is a foul ball. Stayed uh, in the field of play, but 
foul ball. There's not a lot of room down there, John, and good thing it went foul. Frazier was there to make the play, I would have guessed, if it if it were a fair ball. Yeah, we can't quite see the corner there, but just like we talked about when uh, uh, when Van Remortel was chasing the foul ball, you know, Frazier just kind of kept drifting over to it. I mean, he, he's hustling, but it was, it's a long run as well as Flores, the, the right-handed hitter. You're not really expecting him to poke it right down the line. Frazier just a I got hit well, kind of up into the wall. Here's a line drive to Seegers at short, who gloves it for the third out. There's your one, two, three inning for Langenberg. It comes in the third. Let's see if the Hawks can get on the board. It'll be Braden Frazier, Cade Moss, and then back to the top with Wilmus in the bottom of the third. No score between Michigan and Iowa. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. To find an agent near you, visit shelterinsurance.com and switch today. At Oakmall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Bottom of the third inning on this Saturday morning from Omaha. A beautiful day to get us started. Iowa with a win will advance to the championship game tomorrow in the early afternoon, 2 o'clock. Take on the winner of Maryland and Nebraska, their little mini series they've got going on. Great crowd on hand, too. Look at all the black and gold down that left field line and all the way over here towards behind home plate. You told them it was a good day. A good weekend to spend in uh, Omaha. Come over last night, have a good time. Be here bright and early. Fans have shown out so far. And plenty of time with the way that tomorrow's game is positioned should we make it there for a nice little day trip. Those folks in Des Moines, even all the way over in Iowa City, if you're in uh, northwest Iowa, northeast Iowa, you got plenty of time to get here and plenty of time to get home uh, tomorrow after the championship game. Got to get there first. Here's Braden Frazier. Frazier was one of the heroes in the game on Tuesday with the big-time grand slam that really broke things open as we took down the Wolverines. One ball, no strikes to the Hawkeye right fielder. Here's the pitch. Line drive into left and down for a base hit. The Hawks have their first hit. It comes in the third off the bat of Frazier. Nice job by Frazier there, staying with it. Line, good solid line drive. We talked about it in the open. This is a win for Michigan, getting man into the third inning. Uh, so now you really want to kind of work this. I, we talked at the break. I don't, not real gung ho about taking the bat out of Hawkeye hitters' hands, but he's thrown more balls than strikes today. So you just want to make sure that you get your pitch and then punish him when, when you get the one you're looking for. And the key was to get runners on because the numbers for man are, are poor with runners on base. As Moss puts down a perfect bunt down the third base side, Cade will run to first, but be thrown out by the third baseman Stanton, but does his job, and Frazier advances to second. Cade Moss, uh, again, shows why, you know, without the gaudy offensive numbers, why he belonged on one of the all Big Ten teams and, and got there this year. Does a great job defensively, but, um, you know, offensively doesn't have the power numbers that make you go, wow, but 273 average and really handles the bat well. Just a smart, smart baseball player. Moss does a good job to help us set the table now for Ben Wilmis. Top of the order. Frazier out there at second with one out. Bottom of the third, no score, Michigan and Iowa. Man is ready. Here's the first pitch to Wilmis in the dirt. Good block by Sotrace to keep Frazier at second base. And a good read from Frazier. You know, we got punished for that in the first yeah. inning, and Frazier did a good job, recognized that the ball didn't really get away from him, so Trace kept it right on him. 1-0 pitch to Wilmus, high and tight, ball two. This is a good spot for Ben. You know, he's probably thinking, man, i got to pick myself up a little bit from that first inning, and then he's got good discipline and already in a 2-0 count. Well, Ben needs to go full menace here. Make him throw you a strike. 
Wouldn't expect Ben to swing at this pitch, but if he gets the one he likes. The 2-0, just below the letters 2-1. and one. It's a called strike. You know, good fastball up and away. Not Ben's pitch, and again, at 2-0, and oh, happy to see him take that one. We, no, reason to give him, no reason to give him an out if it's not a pitch you really want. The 2-1 pitch, that's in the dirt. Another block by Sotres, and it's 3-1 and one now with one out. Wilmus proceeding with caution on this next pitch. Man has kind of been all over the place, a couple of walks. Iowa's got their first hit from Frazier. Wilmus trying to add to it. Here comes the 3-1. Line drive and off the pitcher, and then to the second baseman, high throw to first to get Wilmus. Unlucky for Ben. He shot that right back up the middle. I think it, it hit off a man. He lost his ball cap. Ooh, yeah, it was high and tight. A headhunter from Wilmus. Yeah, got just enough glove on it to actually push it over toward Burton, so call that 1-4-3. Man will be... Man will fortunately be fine. That one, he got a good look at that, didn't it? It whipped right by his eyes. He saw the seams as Wilmus hit that 101 right back up the middle. 87 coming in, 101 going out. No reward, though. Frazier at second base. Peterson is the batter. Big time shift on for the Wolverines. They've got three infielders now to the left of the bag. The pull side for Sam. Breaking ball high and out to start off Peterson's at bat. Sam walked his first time up. Iowa trying to get on the board now in the third. No score in this one so far with two outs. Frazier's got that lead kind of behind the bag at second, so he's got a good angle to round third if there's a base hit from Peterson. The 1-0, outside ball two. And he's really getting a good secondary lead too. You know, he's getting it, he's seeing it, and he's hopping off and going. If the ball gets gets away from so trace he'll have a chance to move up but he's really really doing a good job seeing it and a hit to the outfield then he'll be able to to beat feet around got to watch out for burton who's creeping behind him a bit the 2-0 to peterson is high ball three tried to go off speed there missed up at the top of the zone and they'll go ahead and just intentionally walk pd anyway so not going to throw the uh Extra pitches to Sam and intentionally walking to get to Brennan Derigi now with two outs, two on for the Hawks. That's the uh, the Michael Jordan meme, and I took that personally. I hope Brennan takes it personally. <laughs> <laughs> See if Brennan uh, he can give uh, Eamon Horweedle a ball to throw bullpen with out there. Sure. So Riggy watches the first one go by low and in for a ball. Riggy with a very uncharacteristic at bat his first time, we'll say that. He's down on strikes. Two outs in the inning. 1-0 pitch to Riggy. Low and in again, 2-0. and he Hasn't thrown a strike in a long time, John. You, you kind of mentioned it earlier. You don't want to take the bat out of the hand, but, man, he, he has not thrown a strike lately. No, you need to go... Uh... You need to go full patience mode. I, I still, I love what Wilmus did. He was able to rope one, but man, it better be exactly what you're looking for. Here's a 2-0, low and in again. He's missed in the same spot every time. Three balls, no strikes to Derigi with Raider Tello on deck. Runners at first and second, two outs. Iowa fans sensing a possibility here for some offensive production. Man's got his sign, 3-0 delivery to Derigi. Low, ball four. That might be, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Does he trust Mann more, or does he trust bringing in a reliever from the bullpen with the bases loaded? We'll see time called. There will be some sort of discussion. Haven't seen the motion to the bullpen yet. There's a look down there, and it looks like they're going to make the call to the pen. Hey, that's better than we did last week. Or on Tuesday, he walked all the way out there, made an umpire come get him. <laughs> Maybe he knows that those weren't strikes today. Well, John, in between the... In between innings during the break, you said, well, this is probably a win for Michigan, and, and you highlighted it again when we got uh, back out of the break. But you got man to the third, and we had said, hey, let's make sure he doesn't make it through the third, and that's the case here right now. Right, So, it, but it's only a push if the Hawkeyes can score. If, if, if Horweedel can come in here and, and, uh, and finish up the at-bat or finish up the inning, 
um, it's still a Michigan win. They got man. They got man. A lot of pitches got him through a long ways. Um, but if Iowa can now come up with that big hit, um, now you can flip the script pretty easy. We'll take a pitching change break. Bottom of the third inning. Bases loaded with two outs for Raider Tello when we come back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. No Visit way. U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. Michigan with a call to the bullpen in the third inning. Bases loaded and two outs. They'll go with Eamon Horwettel, the senior right-hander. Horwettel coming into the tournament as they haven't uh, they haven't helped us out by updating their stats at all here. Maybe they didn't Sam would never. Sam would never have allowed <laughs> that to happen. But he'd made 14 appearances, 8.82 ERA, 16 and a third innings. He's given up 30 hits, 16 runs, five hits. I'm sorry, five walks and 12 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 405, and he comes into just a monster spot here. Just taking a quick look back, finding the box score from uh, the box score from Tuesday when he came into the game. Peter Tello will get the first look at him. He got one out, but he also gave up a hit. And so it'll be big here for the Hawkeyes to. He, he's that he's that sidewinder. He drops it down a little bit and delivers it from the right side. So Tello's going to have to hang with it, float one here to Raider and see if he can drive it. Yep, velocity's just going to be in the middle 80s, but good pitch there outside. But it'll tend to be low. You're going to have to try to raise him up a little bit. You know, this is a good spot. A type of guy Raider can really li line drive one into either of the gaps. One ball, no strikes with two outs. Bases loaded for the Hawks in the third. No score. This one inside, almost hit Raider. Ball two. Just continue. Be patient. Yep. You don't have to swing it 2-0 and oh here. Make sure it's up in the zone a little bit, something you can drive. Don't chase down below your knees. Nest is full of Hawks. The 2-0 pitch to Raider. Ground ball right side foul. Don't chase a pitch inside. Mm. That's ball three. Yeah. Went after one that was definitely not a strike. Good thing it went foul, though. It's 2-1. and one. A sidearm guy. It's kind of easy for him to have a little arm side run, so you see it breaking into right-handers. That one kind of got off the plate into Raiders. See if he can make the adjustment. 2-1 to Tello right down the middle, 2-2. Two two. Michigan crowd making some noise. Hawk fans deciding to respond. Big spot right here. Huge pitch from Horwettel to Tello as he toes the rubber. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded for the Hawkeye third baseman. Here's the pitch. It hit him. Got him on the elbow. We'll take that. Raider Tello hit by the pitch. Braden Frazier scores. one nothing Hawks. RBI Raider Tello. Maybe not exactly how we had it drawn up, but there's not going to be any argument from the Hawk dugout or Hawk fans. As now the Hawks have the lead. And guy that created some uh, some problem and some havoc for the Wolverines on Tuesday steps into the box. Here's Sam Honar. And look at this position now for Iowa. With Hodge coming to the plate, bases loaded. Who else would you really want? He's so good with the bases loaded. Two outs. This team's incredible with two outs. We're really setting them up here, John, to do something good. One nothing, Iowa, bottom three. 
Righty on lefty matchup. Nest still full of Hawkeyes, a runner on each base. Horwettle comes set. First pitch to Honar. Outside, ball one. Great take there from Sam. That's uh, that's a pitch you've seen him kind of swing over from time to time, but great discipline there. Ball just floated outside. Michigan outfielders pinching the gaps a little bit. A lot of room down the line. 1 0 pitch. Honar popped it up to center. Kim will go back a couple steps, come forward now as the wind pushes it in and makes the catch for the third out. We'll leave them loaded, but we do get on the scoreboard. It's 1 0 Iowa. Fourth inning coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Burton, Velasquez, and Voigt here in the top of the fourth inning for Michigan as Iowa leads 1-0. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Good part of the order coming up for the Wolverines. Burton, Velasquez, and Voigt, but Iowa leads one nothing as we get to the top of the fourth inning. You just said that. Did you? It's the, almost those exact words. Well, look, great minds think alike, John. Golly. You don't trust me at all after 56 games. <laughs> well, we'll cover it just in case uh, somebody tuned in right after the ID. How about that? <laughs> all right, Burton, he's got the one Michigan hit today, and he's in the box, a right-handed second baseman. Langenberg ready, can pitch with the lead as Burton shoots it foul down the left side and into the second deck. Ty gave him a high floating breaking ball up, and Burton was way out in front of it, crushed it with the barrel, but no chance in play. Goes low in the dirt to Burton this time, one and one. Iowa 1-0 in the fourth after Raider Tello was hit by a pitch when the bases were loaded. 2-1 now to Burton after that was also low. I guess I'd rather have Ty miss low than high, right? We talk about you know, Michigan's kind of a little bit free swinging. Burton is not on breaking balls. There he holds off the fastball, 3-1. Burton's probably their best hitter. I think we've covered that a couple of times. 3-1. Popped up, though. Huxdorf moving back just a touch over towards Frazier and right now. And Kyle will reach up, grab it with one hand, spin, and lob it back in. One down. The guy that hits the ball out to center field today, I do not want to shake his hand because he will break bones. In your hand. <laughs> it is. You know, it says 408 out there, but really anything between the two Big Ten shields out there, they've got the, the Big Ten logo on. Uh, on a home plate type symbol out there kind of in hard left center and hard right center if a guy can get a ball out between those he is a monster right i i don't know of anybody on either team today that could could do that and the fact that the wind blowing in a bit here velasquez pops this up down the left field line tello giving He's into foul territory now. Raider makes the play. Two down. Just overran it just a touch, but was able to come back and make the grab. Really nicely done. And, and he did just what we were talking about with some of the other ones. He had sprinted all the way back there, gave him some time to adjust. Um, and a great play from Raider. We heard the coaches talk about it in uh, at breakfast this morning. You know, run saving or or out saving plays. That's a good one right there yeah. to go ahead and get that out. And and that's a big one too, because in foul territory, if you don't make the play, people, you know, you could think, well, you know, it's okay, it was foul, but you never know what the next pitch will bring. 
as Ty throws one up and in, just missing to Voigt, who he struck out back in the second. Fastball just a little high, but again, Voigt, really good hitter. You're going to want to not make any big mistakes here. Ty looks like he's in the zone. What do you think, John? Oh, and, and you're seeing it, too, with how quickly he works. Looks down at the wristband, peers over the glove, and deals. The 1-1. Popped up right side over the Michigan dugout. It'll find the seats just below us. We're getting closer, John, but not quite. I was prepared for a bounce there, but it went the other way. Patience will be rewarded. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Langenberg, he's ready. Begins the wind up. The pitch just low. Oh, my goodness. How did he swing at that? That yeah. looked good. Yeah, that's for, for a team that's uh, <laughs> scouting report says likes to free swing. What great, uh, great hold there from Voigt. Well, we got him on that one. We'll take it. One pitch later, a swing and a miss. Langenberg with another K throws it up. One, two, three again in the fourth. Iowa one nothing. Seegers, Huxdorf, and Frazier. Sounds like runs to me. Coming up in the bottom of the fourth. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. Bottom of the fourth inning, Iowa won, Michigan nothing. Each team with just one hit. And I think uh, a little bit of a surprise maybe that we've got somewhat of a pitcher's duel. We're getting there by different routes, but good pitching by both teams so far. Well, and again, you saw that last night in the Michigan State-Nebraska game. If you would have told me that game was was one nothing, you know, getting late in that game, it turned out 4 nothing in Nebraska's favor. But I, I, I got to say, I was not expecting a pitcher's duel in that game. Yeah. And, boy, we got one. And that's what we talked about it in pregame. You know, all the arms that Michigan are going to run out here are Big Ten pitchers. Right. They're, they're good. They just maybe haven't had a chance to show it yet. Horweddle, the sidearm right-hander for Michigan, is back out. He'll take on Seegers to start this inning. Michael, line drive foul to the right side, straight back as well. This was about the point where Iowa got to Michigan on Tuesday. I guess it came in the fifth inning when Iowa batted around. A one pitch, Seegers hits it foul down the left side of the field this time, nothing in two. Kind of saw the same thing there that uh, the pitch that Tello swung at, the ball starts on the inside part of the plate, gets a little, gets a little arm side run, and all of a sudden it gets in on the, uh, in on the hand, so you, Hawkeye hitters will have to make that adjustment. 0-2, oh, swing and a miss, Seegers chased it. Goes down on strikes, don't see that very often. Michael is out number one. Well, and that was all set up by the other pitch, you know, and now he throws that ball on the outside part of the plate. Seegers thinks it might be coming back in, and instead it's a breaking ball that breaks out the exact opposite way, slides down and away in the zone. So Hawk hitters will have to find a way to identify that a little bit quicker so that, I mean, that's, that's a good 24, 30 inches of difference in how that ball finishes up. Kyle Huxdorf is the batter. And Huck's the guy that's going to stand in there if he throws that, tries to get to that inside part of the fastball or inside part of the plate with yeah. a fastball. Huck will take that off the elbow pad, off the thigh. And when you look at a sidearm pitcher, when he misses, you hope he misses up and, and makes a mistake there. And Horwell has not done that yet. 1-0 pitch. Kyle shoots it into right. That will be caught by Velasquez. He came in and slid, slid on his right hip to grab it two down. We talked about it when Tello makes the play. That's a, it's another run-saving 
um, out saving play. So. And he had a lot of trouble in right field on Tuesday. Velasquez did. Didn't look uh, didn't look great tracking everything down out there. A little bit better today as he robs Huxdorf of a base hit. Here comes Frazier. He has Iowa's lone hit this morning. Braden swings at the first pitch, sends it back to the net. Nothing and one. Hawks up one nothing in the bottom of the fourth with two down, bases empty. Frey saw the breaking ball there, just uh, almost swung at it a little late, so we kind of rather him just take it. It would have been a strike anyway. Another foul ball off the bat of Frazier. Down in the count, 0-2. Again, this is a guy that over two base runners per inning on the season. So you just kind of want to keep stick to your plan. Don't press. He's going to give you opportunities. Here's the 0-2. Low and in, ball one. Close, but not enough for Frazier to offer at it. Big time gap in left center for the Hawkeye right fielder. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Pitch to Braden. Popped it up right side towards foul territory. It'll go behind the Michigan dugout. And get out of play. Somebody made a snag there. Yeah, right underneath the second deck overhang. You'd have had a sitting one section over. I would have missed. Just <laughs> close. I, I get close, but... Never sealed the deal, huh? <laughs> One ball, two strikes, two outs. Another pitch to Frazier. Swing and a miss. He was late on it. Good job there from Horwheel. He actually went over the top. As he scouting report had that he did that every once in a while. Set on sidearm, came fastball over the top and got him. Six, seven, eight, coming to the plate for Michigan. When we get to the top of the fifth, we're moving right along. Iowa, one nothing. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Each team with just one hit as we get to the top of the fifth at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. Semi-final Saturday, Iowa and Michigan. The Hawks have the lead. It's 1-0. Langenberg returning to the rubber for another inning of work. Bottom half of the order coming up for the Wolverines. It'll be Van Remortal to leave, lead things off for Michigan. Tied through four innings has given up one hit. He's walked one, he struck out six, has settled in nicely. After the first inning where he just threw a lot of pitches, there was no damage really. Uh, just the one hit came in the first inning, but uh, threw a lot of pitches and has done a nice job since then. Yeah, two out hit, a two out walk. Uh, in the second inning just you know, wasn't efficiently cruising through, done a much better job. Ty still up almost 65% pitches for strikes. Righty on righty matchup. There's a strike number one from Ty to Van Remortal, whom he struck out in the second. Michigan still 48% strikes, so I'd like to see Iowa get some damage done on that later. Popped up to shallow right. Honar goes back. Derigi's around. Sam will make the play. He and Derigi were making eye contact as the ball was headed up into the air there john and derigi was uh derigi was getting a little out of his zone and and uh it, second baseman second baseman first baseman second baseman always wins that derigi did a good job backing off honar was able to peek back up and grab it here's dylan stanton he's one of the few michigan batters to get on base today he drew a walk Ty floats one inside to the Wolverine third baseman. He's their seven hitter. 
Ty got three strikeouts in the second inning, got the first two, and then walked Stanton. Swing and a miss there. The back foot slipped out from behind him. One and one. Yeah, Ty really doing a nice job. You know, and he's not just pounding the center of the zone. He's working the edges. He's getting the swing and misses. Dropped that one in there on the inside corner. It is one and two. Stanton takes a second to get back into the box. Now he's ready. Ty's been ready. Here comes the one, two. Foul tip straight back. Good job there from Stanton to stay alive out in front of it. Moss flashes the sign to Langenberg. Here comes another one, two outside. That's a ball. Showing fastball. Try to keep him a little honest as he couldn't quite get up to the breaking ball last time or time up the breaking ball, so break the timing. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Langenberg got him. He threw that one low and in. Great pitch from Langenberg, two down. Really did. Threw the changeup that time. Got him to swing right over the top of it as Ty's... Ty's changeup has good movement down and down and into a right-handed hitter. Two up, two down for Michigan in the fifth. Here's Kim, the center fielder. He struck out to end the second inning. Left-handed hitter, so Ty adjusts here. The first pitch to Kim, outside ball one. We'll have Moss, Wilmus, and Peterson come to the plate for Iowa in the bottom of the fifth inning. This one is a high fly ball down the line and left. Everybody running over to get there. Tello near the tarp, and it will knock down foul. Raider couldn't get there in time. Neither could Seegers nor Peterson. Actually, I think Tello was there. I think he just overran it. You know, he was, again, really working to try to get to the tarp first, and he gets there, looks down, and the ball ends up being kind of up and behind him, so just kind of a bad angle there, but what a long run. It was next to impossible play, but... Um, gets the strike anyway. Great effort by all three involved. Here comes the 1-1 one -one from Langenberg. Line drive to left. Peterson moving over towards the line. Sam's got it. Three up, three down. That's 10 in a row for Ty. He's been strong for the Hawkeyes. He'll calmly walk off the mound. Need a little bit more run support. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Iowa 1, Michigan nothing. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. Cade Moss, Ben Wilmus, Sam Peterson. Those are the Hawkeyes due up in the bottom of the fifth. one nothing Iowa over Michigan. See if Iowa can get, uh, get on a little bit of roll here and you know, take advantage now as everybody starts to see, see this pitcher. Gives him a chance to, uh, to understand the, the sidearm motion. And then he really did. He kind of snuck one in on Frazier there. And not only was it overhand, but... Uh, by going up overhand, he was able to throw it a little bit harder as well. And so um, snuck it past for Asians. So now Hawkeye hitters have seen that. It was in the scouting report, but now they know it's in the arsenal. They'll have to be, be alert and ready. Moss laid down a sacrifice bunt in the third. Helped us score our only run of the day. First pitch is a strike at the knees to Cade. The theme of the week, and I, I guess towards the end of the regular season, has been to, to break the dam, to, to stick with the process and, and break through. Iowa feels poised for one. 
as the 0-1 pitch to Moss is swung on and missed, nothing in two. But uh, you're not seeing a traditional pitching approach out of Michigan because they don't have much of a, a choice, really. Uh, but when it comes to the starters, it was kind of break that chain like you've talked about, John. Well, and if you're if you're in the Michigan dugout right now, you've gotten everything you want out of you. He went back overhand with the fastball there. You got everything you want out of Mann and so far out of Horwittle is he's thrown strikes. He's kept Hawkeye hitters off balance. You know, good uh, good sidearm mix. He's been able to break the breaking ball away, the fastball in, and then sneaks in the over-the-top fastball. 1-2 to Moss. Fouled it off his foot. He'll limp around. If you need a foot, Kate, I'm here for you, man. Yeah. And, and you know, with the, there's no hey, we'll wait and feel out this pitcher because you're going to see a new one probably with every at bat uh, for each hitter. Yeah, it's, it's unlikely that, uh, uh, that many guys will see a pitcher twice. So you're going you're gonna to get an opportunity to see him. And well, if you see him twice, he's really dealing. Yep. A ball and two strikes to the Hawkeye catcher. The pitch from Horwettel, ground ball to third. Stanton will back up, backhand it, throw it across, one down. Cade's limping pretty good there, John. Really no place to go. Uh, Behind Cade, so hope he's okay. He's jogging it out here a little bit. My guess is it's going to take uh, uh, it's going to take a crowbar, an ambulance, and uh, and four people to drag Cade, aw Cade away from the catcher's gear and, right. and behind home plate. Stronger force of nature. All right, one down for Iowa in the fifth. Hawks lead at one nothing. Back to the top with Wilmus. Squared to bunt, pulled it back, I thought. He said that he went around and didn't pull it back in time. He held it out there a long time. Um, looked like he tried to pull it back at the very last second, but in uh, home plate umpire Grady Smith's opinion, he didn't get it pulled back quick enough. So it's 0-1 to Wilmus. Here's the pitch. Ben popped it up towards the Michigan on deck circle. This will find the seats, though, about 10 rows back. 0-2. To the top of the Iowa order. You just want to stay disciplined. There's no one. You've got the lead, so yep. that's the most important part of the equation. But you just you don't need to press. Keep doing your thing. As you mentioned, they're, they're likely to see another pitcher here um, in short order. O2 is low and out. That's a ball. And hopefully every Hawk hitter right now has seen the pattern. Right. O2, he's going to throw you an overhand fastball. It's, he, he snaps back around and does it. So um, be alert, be ready. And if it happens to come across the middle of the plate, sit on one and drive it. Operating from the first base side of the rubber. Here comes the 1-2. Wilma sends it back foul. Ooh. We'll do it again. Guy, oh, and he's just regretful of the ball right in his hands and couldn't make the play. That's tough. You would have made the play. Of course. Yeah. I was actually looking for the rebound again. Getting closer with the foul balls up here. We've got our windows open. Great vantage point. We're just down the first base line a touch, looking right into the Iowa dugout. One, two pitches high to Wilmus. It's two and two. Just want to make a, a little note. You know, we talk so much about the fact that Michigan is you know, kind of out of pitching, and that's what happens when you come from the elimination side of the, the bracket, uh, the loser's bracket, but still have the lead at one nothing. As the 2-2 two -two to Wilmus hit him, plunked him in the shoulder, and Wilmus, the menace, is on with one out. Saw the floating curveball and just said, there's no way I'm getting out of the way of this. Stood right in the box, took one for the team. One out, runner on first. As we prop up the storylines of this game, it, it kind of creates a path of how people think the game should go. And that's the danger in, in talking about all those storylines. It is the reality of the matter. It's the fact of the matter. Michigan's short on pitching. But uh, that isn't, you know, the way today's game is going right now. What? We're in the fifth. It's only one nothing. We've only got one hit. Well, exactly. They've thrown strikes. They've done a good job of moving it around, keeping hitters off balance. Well, I shouldn't say they've even thrown a ton of strikes. They've thrown enough strikes to keep Hawkeye hitters off balance. Here's Peterson. Swings at the first pitch and barely tapped it foul. I heard the ping of the bat, but I didn't see the ball go anywhere, and it was right next to Peterson. High breaking ball there. Petey might have missed that one, but I think the only way he would have, I shouldn't say it with Petey, but his best opportunity to hit that hard would have been to right center field, but he could probably have also put it in the Hawkeye bullpen. Yes. He's made friends with that bullpen out there and left this week. 
Wilmus at first base. Here's the 0-1 to Petey. Fouled back, 0-2. I was getting some really good swings off, but uh, just missing it a touch this morning. And again, that was another breaking ball. So, you know, you can't just look for that overhand fastball here at 0-2, but you've got to be, you know, you've got to be aware that he might change the angle here. Here's the 0-2 to Sam. Swing and a miss. Went over the top and threw it by him. Really interesting. You could actually see that when he, he completely changes his approach. You know, he's, a, he's really crouched over. He's really leaned down low. And as he went into his windup, he right away stood up. And at that point, you know what's coming. Um, now, again, that's a great fastball, low and outside part of the plate. Um, but, but you can see it coming. There's a distinct difference in his motion. Maybe the key is to not let him get to two strikes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good starting point. And Iowa's been aggressive early in counts, but just hitting everything foul. Here's DeRiggy with two outs. Pickoff move to first base, keeping Wilmus around the bag. 1-0 Iowa in the bottom of the fifth. A win for the Hawks. Be into the championship game tomorrow. First pitch to DeRiggy. And he started him over the top there with a breaking ball. Low and in, ball one. Yeah, that was an overhand curveball that time, so good snap. And it was... It was pretty close. Good pitch. You might have surprised the umpire, too. Might have, and I didn't see where the catcher was set up, if he was outside or what happened. But, yeah, I think he moved him across the plate. Short lead at first base for Ben. Pit, uh, pickoff move, high throw over to first. That was a fastball over to first. That might have been more than he's been bringing it to the plate. Dorigi struck out in the first. He walked in the third. Find a way on here. The 1-0 pitch outside corner. 1-1. One one. Tough pitch for Brennan to do anything with. Yeah, that's a really good breaking ball down low and away. I really love to see Brennan stay on one, drive it to left center field, just kind of keep that shoulder from flying out. Two outs in the inning. The 1-1. Swing and fouled off the catcher. Ouch. So trace a bit shaken up. Boy, and that was a 76 mile an hour breaking ball right in the center. The Hawks are just missing it a little bit uh, today. I, I don't know if they're not seeing it as well or what exactly is going on. But well, it's funny, you know. It's, it's both teams, one hit. You know, it's the, the sunlight is different early in the morning. Sure. I mean, it's, it's just a different uh, ability to see the ball. Here's the one, two. That's outside, ball two. Good hang there by DeRiggy to not chase that one. Everything's been off speed to DeRiggy so far. And, and really, he's done a, Horwiedel's done a pretty good job of staying over the top. He hasn't been, I guess he kind of loses a little bit of his advantage when he goes sidearm to a left hander, but. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch to Dorigi. Outside, ball three. That'll put Wilmus in motion. Now all of a sudden the ball in the gap. Wilmus' speed, he'll be able to get a little bit bigger lead as, as uh, Van Remortal will go behind him. Not too far away from him, but enough that he'll be able to get a little bigger lead. Full count pitch to Dorigi. Swing and a miss. Chased one way out of the zone, high above the letters. Iowa puzzled in the box, but the Hawks still lead 1-0 as we go to the sixth. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com.
9-1-2 for the Wolverines as we get to the top of the sixth this morning in Omaha. So Trace, Jeffress, and Flores, they'll get another look at Ty Langenberg. It'll be the third time through the order for Michigan, and so far Ty through five innings has given up one hit, one walk, and he struck out seven. Pitch count is at 76 for the Hawkeye hurler right now. He's retired 10 in a row, and he's had three straight one, two, three innings. Try to make it 11 with Sotrace coming to the box. He grounded out to third, back in the third. Getting to the sixth, each team still with one hit. Iowa's got the one nothing lead. Langenberg against Sotres. First pitch, swing and a miss over the top of that one. We need, to, we need to make a change. I'll raise my blind. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Just trying to change the juju a bit. We're up one nothing, but Sotres pops it up to left. Peterson took a false step back. One step forward, one out. Again, good, uh, good pitching there from Ty. Gets ahead and is able to kind of get his pitch hit after that. Well, he might have caught a little bit more plate than you're really looking to do when you're ahead. Off the end of the bat a little bit, worked out nicely though. Ty has done a really solid job for Iowa today. We'll see how he does the third time through the order now with Jeffress in the box. Outside corner, strike one. Starting him off with off speed there to keep Jeffress guessing. Jeffress is 0 for 2 today, like many of the Michigan hitters are. Here comes the 0 1 from Ty. Too far outside with the fastball that time, 1 and 1. Yeah, it's just uh, it's important for Ty to keep pounding the zone. Outside corner again, but did not get the call. It's 2 and 1. Probably best that my track man was a little sketchy. Fouled back and over the screen to the left side this time. Two and two. Good pitch there from, from Ty. It might have been a little low in a way, but it's, uh, it was interesting as we were watching the game uh, yesterday, too. Two, two from Ty is low. Full count now. You know, sometimes when the catcher puts a big frame on it, you know, and really tries to snap it back, you kind of lose the fact that you hit that outside corner. Yeah. It looks like you move it so far that you fool the umpire a little bit the wrong way. 3-2, swing and a miss. Langenberg got him. Swung over the top of that one, two down. And in that, in that case, you fool the hitter in a good way. Sure. Strikeout number eight for Ty. He's cooking. Here's Tito Flores, also 0 for 2. He'll slowly walk to the right-handed batter's box. Iowa 1-0 in the sixth. Yeah, Jeffers was slow out. Flores is slow in. Start that clock. I mean, this guy's just pacing around. Ties on the rubber and ready to go. Third base umpire just looked down at his, because it's the scoreboard clock isn't moving. Yeah, that one's on the, the designated for the pitcher, I guess, with the 20 seconds there. It, he doesn't have 20 seconds to get in the box. I think it's less time. It, I no. thought it was five, but... Yeah, it's five or eight. I can't remember exactly. 1-0 pitch from Ty is hit foul. Down the third baseline, a few kids will reach over the half wall, try to grab it, but Caleb Strack out of the Iowa dugout is going to have to jog down there and get it in foul territory. Counts one and one. We'll go hand it to a fan. Better have made sure that gold shirt was a Hawk shirt. Right. 1-1 one, one hit Flores. Couldn't get out of the way of it, and that ball was attracted to a magnet somewhere on Flores' hand. Breaking ball up and in or off speed pitch. Might have been, and yeah, that was actually a changeup that got away from Ty there. So the streak ends for Ty. He'd retired 12 in a row. And that stops with a hit by pitch and brings up Ted Burton. He's their second baseman. He's got the Michigan hit today. Two outs in the Wolverine sixth. The Iowa won nothing. First pitch to Burton outside. Ball one. Thought maybe the corner, but didn't get the call. Boy, just barely missed there. That was close. Just, just off the plate. Just didn't get any help. Tello at third base really hugging the line. Don't want to give up a double. That's pulled by Burton. 1-0 pitch, ground ball foul, past Tello on the other side of the white line. 
Strack getting loose again. Yeah, Strack's getting his steps in, jogging down that left field line. This is, I mean, I know the runner's just on first, but this is an important at bat. Burton's a good hitter. 1-1 one, one from Langenberg, just off the plate outside, ball two. Got some loosening in the bullpen for Iowa. Nobody throwing, but a couple of Hawks stretching out down there. Burton's really hunting for fastballs, so you're seeing kind of the mix from Ty. The 2-1, called strike inside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Good breaking ball there, came right back on the inside part of the plate. Burton was ready to go and then had to try to check his swing. Really thought he was going to get fastball on the 2-1 pitch. Didn't. See if Ty can get him with a changeup. The 2-2 from Langenberg. Not quite yet. Going to throw it over to first to keep the runner, Flores, near the bag. Again, that was the pitch that Burton stole on was 2-2. So chance Flores will be moving. Langenberg ready. Here comes the 2-2. Hit well to left. Peterson. Shuffles back, now backpedals in front of the track. Still looking up towards the sky. He's got it for a long out, a loud out, but the third out, nothing doing for Michigan. Ty is terrific as we go to the bottom of the six. Let's help him out, Hawkeye Bats. one nothing Iowa. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Charles Schwab Field, downtown Omaha. Great ballpark full of Hawkeye fans today. Iowa 1-0 in the bottom of the sixth. Horwetta will come out for another inning. Just can't get this guy out of the game. He's done a nice job against us. He's got four strikeouts over two and a third innings pitched. Has not given up a hit. Raider Tello, Sam Honar, Michael Seegers, Seegers will try to change that tune. Yeah, from a uh, you know, from a Michigan, the only thing the Michigan dugout doesn't like right now is the actual score. They've gotten everything they need from uh, from their pitching staff, and just uh, and probably more than they would have expected. You mentioned uh, O'Halloran yep. down there warming up in the bullpen. Uh, my guess is if they could get if they could get a lead, you would see O'Halloran become a closer. Right. Big Ten pitcher of the year getting loose for the Wolverines in the bullpen. Do some damage sooner rather than later. Here's Tello. Ball one to him. Raider was hit by a pitch while the bases were loaded. That's the only run that's been scored in this game. And that was by this pitcher. So, um, you know, now we're starting. Now the Hawks will have seen him one time through. 1-0 pitch to Raider. Hard ground ball foul past Coach Heller down the line at third. See if that helps the... Helps the hitters at all. And the trend for Iowa has been you get to the middle innings and, okay, if it's not going your way offensively, just to keep sticking with it and not get rattled or phased. Don't press. Iowa's been very good at that lately. Tello tries to bunt the 1-1 pitch and hit it foul. That's an interesting choice. One and two. Well, you had the third baseman playing way back. Stanton was, uh, what, four, five, six steps behind the bag. Doesn't have to be a great bunt uh, to get it uh, uh, to give yourself a chance. It's a pretty good bunt. Just uh, just ended up pulling it foul. So now he'll be now he'll be behind. Have to look for the overhand fastball and play a little defense. Horwell will come set the one-two ground ball snagged by the pitcher. Reached his glove out. He'll underhand toss it to first base. 
one out. A lot of two strike counts today, John. I'm a little bit surprised by it offensively for Iowa. Well, that ball was 103 off the bat. But yet, to your point, though, the funny thing you say that Michigan pitchers have just thrown 53% strikes. So. Um, yeah, we, because it's been 1-2-0-2 basically all day. Well, but but they're throwing then balls to match that. So, I mean, they're not throwing, they're not throwing, you know, 45 strikes, 39 balls. So it's not, um, it's not just 0-2. It's just Hawkeye hitters haven't been able to really barrel up when they've gotten ahead and had a chance. Am I going to have to talk you off the ledge Well, again? no, I'm just saying a lot of those balls came from the, the starting pitcher who walked four guys. This guy's thrown almost all strikes and just in great spots where we haven't been able to hit it well yet here's honar 1-0 pitch to him he crushes this deep to center kim is going back towards the track and he caught it at the base of the wall two down and yeah, that ball's 107 off the bat it's 399 but as we talked about earlier in the game you're just not going to hit it out to there you just you yeah. pull that any and it's gone yeah <laughs> i mean any other direction and and it's still a good chance to, to get a hit as it's a long way for Kim to run. And, you know, he didn't get there any too early, but, um, you know, maybe a little bit more of a line drive instead of a little bit more of a launch, and, and it's a hit. But there you go. Hit a ball hard. Clobbered just one, yeah. Actually hit a ball hard to make the first out of the inning, too, just right back at the pitcher. Michael Seegers will look to get us going with two outs. Base is empty. First pitch inside, ball one. Hawks lead one nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Orwell comes set, the 1-0. Michael, line drive, base hit into left. One hops, the left fielder Flores, and a two-out single gives Iowa their second hit of the game. Three consecutive hard hit balls. Yep. Um, Knocking on the door, tapping on the dam, trying to break through here in the sixth. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe you try to, although if you're Michigan, you try to get him through this inning, get a, get your, uh, get a clean one, but... You know, Huck's obviously a guy that can do some damage, create some problem. Michigan has a righty and a lefty yeah. ready to go. And again, if this pitcher wants to go inside to Huck, it's a dangerous spot with the hit by pitch possibility, but Kyle likes those to pull on the inside. First pitch to Huckstorf. Popped up right side. This will get out of play, thankfully. Foul ball. Seeger's on first base with two outs. A gapper would be good. Kyle hit one of those against Indiana to give us the lead when the bases were loaded. Seeger's with a decent lead at first base. They'll throw it over to him. The first baseman dropped it. It was a great throw right on the yeah. right on the tag spot. I think Seeger's was back anyway, but perfectly placed throw you try to play any games with Michael to get into scoring position haven't had a ton of action on the base pass today oh one pitch not quite yet and this throw gets away from the first baseman get going Michael he's headed for a second what's he gonna do he's gonna turn the corner oh he slammed on the brakes oh, and he stopped at second make him throw that ball Michael Seegers coach, coach Heller waved him coach Heller was giving him, ah. giving him the wave you make him th make the first baseman make that throw. You never want to, well, you never want to make the third out at third. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Michael, let's see what happens. Michael <laughs> Seegers, Michael Seegers is a uh, is a very uh, smart baseball player. So if he didn't think he was going to get there, um, coach I, coming out of the dugout for Michigan in the middle of the at bat. We'll see if they make a change. He's looking down the right side. I think he just tapped his left wrist. That could be O'Halloran. Doors open. We'll see who's coming out of the bullpen for Michigan. We'll take a pitching change break. Iowa 1-0 in the bottom of the sixth. There are two outs. Runner at second for the Hawkeyes. Pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, 
or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately. Then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the sixth inning in Omaha, semifinal Saturday. A win for the Hawkeyes today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow in the championship game. Iowa leading 1-0 as it stands right now over Michigan. The Wolverines just made a pitching change, and they'll go with the lefty Connor O'Halloran, the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year. Yeah, that was... Uh... Uh, he has made a relief appearance this year. 16 appearances, 15 starts, 8-6 record, 388 ERA, 102 innings, 86, inning, 86 hits, 51 runs, 44 earned, 25 walks, and 110 strikeouts. On Tuesday against the Hawkeyes, he went five innings, seven hits, seven runs. They were all earned, walked two, and struck out seven. And this is uh, one, two, three days rest. Yep. Well, and, and he maybe views this as a revenge spot for his performance against Iowa. And I'm sure he does, and I'm sure this is, uh, you know, he, while college pitchers don't pitch this frequently, it is a place where, um, you know, he would be throwing at some point anyway, uh, you know, whether it's down in the bullpen to get in, you know, 20, 30 pitches, whatever it is. Um, he, he, he was going to throw yep. today. It just happened to be in a live setting. No balls and a strike to Huxdorf with two outs. He swings at the first pitch he sees, sends it to center, and it's over Kim's head all the way to the wall. Seegers scores. Huxdorf, he's digging for three. Kyle, the kid, does it again. Two nothing. Hawks. Kyle Huxdorf loves this ballpark. That's the same ball. If Honar hits that one on a little bit more of a line, we've already got the runs in the hit. But gosh, Huxdorf goes 106 off the bat, takes the 87 mile an hour, really well located fastball, and drives it over Kim. And the Hawks have doubled the lead. 2 0, Kyle again. Yes! Keep the foot on the gas here, boys. It's Braden Frazier in the box with two outs. Huxdorf at third base. O'Halloran taking his time, looking at that wrist for the sign. The lefty delivers to Frazier. Swing on the ground. Diving stop by the shortstop. Throw to first. Tip your cap. Outstanding play there by Jeffress. Man. Run saving play there as Jeffress comes up with it on it. Up the middle, hops to his feet and fires. But hey, Hawks get a run. Ty Langenberg walking back out with a two run lead now. Iowa up 2 0. Seventh inning coming up. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. An easy pill to swallow? Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376.
Top of the seventh inning in Omaha. The Hawks add another run. It's 2-0. Ty Langenberg returning to the rubber to face Velasquez, Voigt, and Van Remortal. It'll be 4-5-6. Need to hold the Wolverines here. Going to have to go through the entire lineup at least one more time. Right. So, T Ty at 92 pitches. He's getting up there. Yeah, I would guess this is probably it for Ty. Um, but... His velocity stayed up so far. His location has stayed good. The Hawks have had some arms moving, so they'll be uh, they'll be ready to go. Again, you don't have. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna voice that out loud. Just keep keep it uh, keep your location good and see what happens. Here's Velasquez. First pitch from Langenberg. That looked good. It was strike one. Good start there for Ty. And again, he's done a nice job getting strike one for the most part today. A one pitch, just low this time, maybe a bit outside as well. One and one. Just a touch low. Next pitch from Langenberg. Check swing. I think he went. Yes, he did. Strike two. Good job there. The Hawks go into the shift. We saw this work beautifully on Thursday. Um, and against the Indiana right fielder, so. Langenberg's 1-2 delivery. Tapped foul towards the Michigan dugout over near us. We'll do it again at 1-2. and two. We see Ty's change up here. You like the fastball. Which one you want? I like fastball. Here comes the 1-2. Ground ball right side. This will be a tough play. Tello cuts off Honar. Raider glove flips it. Safe at first. Incredibly difficult play there. Michigan gets their second hit, a cheap hit for the Wolverines, but a hit nevertheless. He actually went change up, and it was a really good pitch down low and away. Actually would have rather seen, seen Tello barehand it and see if he could have flipped it that way, trying to flip it out of the glove. He couldn't get anything on it. I don't think it really mattered either yeah. way. Um, just a, uh, a perfectly placed 42-mile-an-hour off-the-bat hit. Dangerous hitter now with Voight, right-handed hitter. Swings at the first pitch and fouled it back. So Michigan's got their second hit of the game. Top of the seventh, Iowa 2-0. Runner at first is Velasquez. Basically no speed there. He's one for four on stolen base attempts this year. Short lead at first. Long pause from Ty. Here comes the 0-1. Low and out, ball one. A little bit of pop in this part of the lineup. Seven home runs for Voight. As we mentioned, outstanding performance yesterday was four for five in the box against Indiana. Three singles and a double yesterday. One, one, swing and a miss, chase that one, one and two. Really good change up there again from Ty. Ty's a ground ball machine, strikeout, double play, we'd take either of those right now, nobody out. In the seventh, one ball, two strikes, Langenberg ready, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Really good breaking ball there. Out, out and away. Sends Voigt slow walking back to the dugout. And brings up Van Remortal. Ty's done a good job against Voigt today. Voigt's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. That's punch out number nine for Langenberg. And here is Van Remortal. I think we got, a, we got a pinch runner in the game now. Yeah, I believe that's Pace. He was, he didn't play the first time against us, but we saw him in the other games. And he does have some pace. Yeah, so he's at first base, and, and you got to assume he'll go into, into right field then for Velasquez. Here's Van Remortal, right-handed hitter. Eight for eight with stolen bases, and I believe he had one then uh, yesterday, so... First pitch way inside. Thankfully did not hit the Michigan first baseman who's 0 for 2 today. Ben Wilmus took that one off the shoulder. Ben Remortal ducks out of the way. All right. Keep that in mind. Top seven, Iowa 2-0. Langenberg will throw it over to DeRiggy to keep pace around the bag. I guess if you're Michigan, maybe you want Van Remortal swinging. You can tie it with one swing. Yeah, and you got to watch out, too. Wind has shifted now, blowing out to left. More right to left, I guess, towards the pole, but not blowing in anymore. Right. You can you can now get a ball out yep. uh, to, to left field. I still don't think you can get one out to right or right center. 
1-0 pitch from Langenberg in the dirt, 2-0. I know pace is a running threat, but you know we talked about it with the Michigan starter in man. Don't spread your attention. Yep. You're, you know, again, at the end of the day, you're, you're two outs away from seventh inning stretch. This is in the dirt. Moss had to block it, 3-0. Ties up over 100 pitches now. Iowa's got activity in the bullpen. It's Will Christofferson getting loose. And they, did, they did not see Christo on Tuesday, right. so. Really have to battle here. Tying run at the plate for Michigan. Here's the 3-0. It gets by Cade. I don't know how Cade didn't catch that. It went off his glove. Doesn't matter, though. It's ball four, and thankfully so. Otherwise, Pace could have been at third base. Couple on now for Michigan. That'll bring a mound visit, I would guess, from Coach McGrath. Yep, here comes Sean, headed to the mound to talk to Ty as Christofferson continues to get loose in the Iowa bullpen. It's not going to be easy, a single and now a walk, as Michigan has two runners on with one out in the seventh. Dylan Stanton will be the batter. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk today. Great news. Gamecast made it go final. Check out your... Well, <laughs> long way from that. Four-pitch walk from Ty there, and get back on the edge of your seat a bit. Yeah, what well, went from a pretty, uh, pretty comfortable, pretty much dealing to uh, a little bit and more entertaining here. Mound visit broken up. Very close to going to Christofferson, I'd imagine. As Coach Smith is, we just had another pinch runner come in. I suppose you put the tying run on base, you're going to make it, put all your speedy guys out there. Sure. Jake Marty is the runner at first base now for Michigan. Pace out there at second. One out in the seventh. Iowa 2 nothing. The batter being Stanton, their third baseman. Marty, 15 stolen bases and 16 tries. Obviously, he's not going anywhere with the runner in front of him. But he's a threat to score sure. from first base on any ball that kind of splits the outfielders. Wind is shifted again, blowing straight in from center. Langenberg out of the stretch, looks in for the sign from Stanton, or rather from Moss. Pitch to Stanton inside ball one. Langenberg ready again. Here comes the 1-0. Ground ball to Seegers at short, gloves it, flips to second for one, on to first, double play! How about that? Ha-ho! Seegers, Honar, Derigi, and we get out of the jam in the seventh. What a hard hit ball right up the middle. Seegers stuck with that. We saw a hop last night in the Michigan State game that bounced over Va Bradenberg's head. Seegers stays with it, catches it up on a big bounce. Fires to Honar, who makes a great turn. We're stretching 2-0 Hawks. How about the defense for Iowa? There it is. Run saving plays. Iowa 2, Michigan nothing. Bottom of the seventh coming up. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. How about that double play? Seegers to Honar to Derigi to stretch us and get us to the bottom of the seventh with our lead still intact. It's 2 0 Iowa. Well, we've talked all game long, uh, and both teams have really done a nice job about game saving plays. 
The defense hasn't made every play they've had an opportunity to make, but both teams have made a lot of really outstanding defensive plays. And boy, if you're a Hawk fan, none better than that one right there. You mentioned it at the break. Seegers not only had to go up the middle, he had to be able to square his shoulders up to Honar to be able to put something on the throw. Got squared up. Honar then made a great turn because his back's to first base. Need a, f need a few more runs here as Cade Moss is in the box. Swings at the first pitch and fouled it off. It's 0-1. We're facing off against O'Halloran. We saw him on Tuesday, the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, coming in relief for the Wolverines here towards the end of the game. 0-1 pitch to Moss. That's in there for a strike at the knees, nothing in two. It's the first pitch the Hawkeye hitters haven't swung at. as they, uh, The first one worked out great, and the second one almost did with, uh, with Frazier. Moss fouled one back and took a strike. Have to be alert now. 0-2 from O'Halloran. Low, good job by Cade Moss to not golf at that one. Ball one. What a great take there. That's a really nice pitch from O'Halloran. You kind of forget how good and how difficult he was to hit in the first first four innings of the game on Tuesday. Right. Out of the windup, the crafty lefty's ready. The one-two. Moss shoots it into left, base hit. In front of the left fielder, Flores. And Moss is on with a leadoff single. Best nine hitter in baseball. No doubt about that. Just continues to strengthen that argument. There needs to be an award for that. He'd have two votes from us. <laughs> now we'll see if Iowa goes into uh, goes into short game mode. You know, two's great, three's better. Right. So see if, uh, if they can move. You can... Probably, probably be the only type of, of game. Cade's got a little bit of speed, but you're not really in a position where you want to get uh, get creative sending him, even though O'Halloran isn't quick to the plate, and, and you can read the move pretty well. Wilmus in the box, squares to bunt, hit it foul. To the right side. Maybe get that out a little sooner. I think he was trying to actually push it to first base, and look looked like he, as he pulled the bat back, he just he dipped, it, dipped the bat head down and... and when he opened up the angle instead of just opening it up shoulders. We saw O'Halloran field a bunt and throw it away in the game on Tuesday, right? We did. 0-1 pitch to Wilmus. He bunted this one, popped it up, and it is a fair ball. Fair ball. It pops straight up. Wilmus thought he hit it foul. Moss gets to second. Second, Stay there, Cade. Stay at second base. Stay on the bag. Now he's running towards third, back at second. What in the world is going on? Well, Cade, Cade, th Cade thought it was a foul ball, but Michigan had nobody covering third base. Left field. That Flores has to come flying in. Because Moss is still not sure he's supposed to stay there. Wilmus popped that bunt straight up in front of the plate. Nobody saw it off the bat. Not even the catcher. The third baseman was the closest one around, and he never really made a play on it. It landed in the dirt and grass cut in front of the plate. Wilmus was just tagged out just outside of the box. Catcher would have been able to make an easy play on it, but he couldn't see where the ball went. We're going to intentionally walk Petey again. I mean, I was very fortunate in that circumstance there that that bunt was unattended to by Michigan. Yeah, that's a double play. Stanton tried to make a great diving play finally at the last second, but all he did was end up touching it and making it a fair ball. As, yeah, as he stops that ball, O'Halloran then picks it up, tags out Wilmus. Make him pay here. They just intentionally walked Sam Peterson to get to Brennan DeRiggy. At some point, we got to make him pay for that. Here's DeRiggy with one out. Runners at first and second. Bottom seven. Hawks up 2 nothing. First pitch to DeRiggy in the dirt. Well, it took us a while to get you there, Hawkeye fans, but I think we finally sorted out that bunt situation. Yeah, I think we've... Uh, <laughs> oh. Fastball high. Not a great bunt. Nobody great saw, outcome. Nobody saw it. Sacrifice. <laughs> Iowa fans on their feet to the left, shaking the pom-poms, clapping. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from O'Halloran to DeRiggy. Inside, ball two. Boy, that ball is right on the inside part of the plate. Rig catches a little bit of a break there. See if he can take advantage now ahead in the count, 2-0. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts today. Been a rough week for Brennan. He can change things here. The 2-0. There's a strike. That's just a really good pitch there from O'Halloran. Again, 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Dots it knee high. Brennan owes the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year a smack or two. O'Halloran taking his time. Now he comes set. The 2-1 del delivery, not quite yet. They'll try a pickoff move to second base.
Still a lot of room in left center for the Hawkeye first baseman. He's had a tough week. Here comes the 2-1 from O'Halloran. On the ground, left side, and through into left field. Here comes Moss around third. Hill scores, standing up. DeRiggy, ho-ho, yes, 3-0. Hawks. Not a hit that's going to go in Brennan DeRiggy's highlight reel. Out in front of the breaking ball, but hits it through the shift. Hawks extend the lead again with the fifth hit of the game. 3-0 Iowa. DeRiggy with the spinner off the end of the bat. 68 mile an hour cue ball. <laughs> and you know, now what you're doing too. Now, Hallard's still, funny enough, only thrown, he's still only thrown 13 pitches. So it feels like he's been out there forever. Yep, we've been knocking at the door, John, trying to break the dam like we've done on Tuesday and Thursday. Here's Raider Tello with one out. First pitch to Raider, low and in, ball one. Good speed at second base, reasonable speed at first in Rig. Talking to Rig before the game about uh, NCAA tournament, you know, sitting there last year waiting for the call. He said they had the they had cameras in their locker room at Wofford. The 1 0 to Tello, outside and high, ball two. He said they had cameras in the locker room, they had champagne, they were ready for the call, they were going to film it all. They never got the call. Hearts broken. And so this is. This, this means a ton to him. You know, the five seniors that went around, we were talking, there's three of them that it, it looks like are going to make the NCAA tournament. So great to see him have some success here today. Keep adding to it. Runner takes off. 2-0 pitch is a strike. Throw down to third. Safe. Peterson beat it. Two in scoring position now for Raider Tello. And that was a great jump there. That was kind of that, we talk about it a lot with the vault lead. Petey just kept going, kept going. O'Halloran never checked back, and Petey just took off. Stolen base number 20 for Petey. How about that? All right, that'll bring in the infield for Michigan. We want to go back to Derigi for a second. I was talking to him the other day. He's not going to believe it until he sees that Iowa on the selection show on Monday, by the way, just to finish that thought. Correct. We, <laughs> we, either, we either win the game tomorrow at 2 or he's going to be fouled the way out back. But he's, he's going to be very nervous all the way through. And again, rightfully so. Yep. Is he said they had three chances. They were in the championship game three times with two games to win it. All they had to do was win one of the two, and they couldn't finish it off. So, uh, 0 for 6. And, and left, it, left it to the committee, and he didn't make it. So he, he would just as soon the Hawks win tomorrow, and he doesn't even have to sweat yep. it at all. Two balls, two strikes with one out. O'Halloran ready. The pitch to Tello. Ground ball through into right. Peterson scores. DeRiggy slams on the brakes at third. Good thing he did. It was a great throw by Pace in right. Tello, time. He adds to the lead. 4 nothing. Hawks. Raider Tello expanding his range. Goes to right field. We talk about how good he is at hitting it, hitting it through the gap and up the middle. That one, he shoots it through the drawn-in infield. The Hawks adding more runs. On to the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year. The dam is cracked. There's water leaking everywhere. Iowa 4, Michigan nothing in the bottom of the seventh inning. We've got time called a mound visit here for the Wolverines. In the meantime, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Iowa up to six hits now and shutting out Michigan 4 0 in the bottom of the seventh. Runners at the corners for the black and gold for Sam Honar, who will come to the box in just a moment. Yeah, I don't it's not the it's the pitching coach, so I really don't think it's a it's a change. Kind of patted O'Halloran on on the arm. That would be, I guess, the only reason they might make a change is if he just didn't quite uh, didn't quite think he had it. But um, again, the way they the way they rode him on on Tuesday, he kind of expected him to, to stay in, and, and sure enough, it's home plate umpire breaks it up. O'Halloran will scuff at the mound and have a chance to face Honar. 
Big Ten Pitcher of the Year. We thought he was in our dugout, uh, John. <laughs> we thought we were worthy of the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year. They went with Michigan's guy instead, and Iowa's knocked him around twice in the tournament. I feel safe saying that. You enjoy that, don't you? I did, yep. <laughs> Keep it rolling here, Sam. Honar in the box. He'll tap the outside part of the plate and wave the bat through the zone. Now shouldering it. Runners at the corners with one out. Iowa, 4 nothing in the seventh. Lefty on lefty matchup. Honar takes the first one outside, ball one. Nice take there from Sam. There's at least one more run to get. One out, runner on third. I mean, there's another runner on first, but, you know, you want to you wanna capitalize with runners on right. third and less than two out. Derigi at third, Tello at first. Tello and O'Halloran having a stare off. Here's the 1-0 pitch, outside again. Honar takes it, ball two. You know, Iowa hasn't had a ton of chances, but three for six now with runners in scoring position. Much better. Yeah, much better. So they've, they've really kind of leveraged the opportunity. Hitters count for Honar. Lay off that one low and outside, Sam. Here comes the 2-0. Popped it up. Hopefully this gets out of play. It's straight back. The catcher will give it a look, but it'll find the seats. Fortunate there, two and one. Sam got a high breaking ball up right at the top of the zone. Uh, we were talking about Sam's, it might have been his first home run of the year down when we were at South Alabama, the one that was barely off the ground that he golfed out of the ballpark. That bounced. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, if he can see one from O'Halloran out of the left hand that's that's low like that, I like Sam's chances to give it a ride. Two balls and a strike with one out. Runners hit the corners for Iowa in the seventh. It's 4 nothing Hawks. Here's the pitch. It's low. Too low. Sam won't swing at that one. Ball three. Good take there. 91-mile-an-hour fastball. Hawks have scored in two innings in a row here. Might as well keep piling on. Check on Raider at first base. He has a slow motion dive back into the into the bag like you were diving off the high dive there. Got a little airborne. We've got a new first baseman in there. Yeah, it's Marty who came in for Van Remortal, the, That's right. the pinch runner. Three balls and a strike. Iowa fans on their feet to the left. They want more. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, three and two. That one caught so trace behind the plate. Ouch. Fastball up and away from, from Sam. And those are the ones that when he decides to go opposite way with those, he really does does the damage. But I also get on a 3-1 pitch why you're, uh, why you're willing to sit on it and try to just demolish one. Must have got a little bit of a piece of it to hit Sotrace there. Yeah, and it caught him funny on the glove hand. He was shaking that off. All right, full count. O'Halloran versus Honar. Runners at the corners with one out. Here's the pause. Here's the pitch. Line drive into left. Flores coming forward. He dives. He makes the catch. Derigi will tag. Derigi will score. Iowa 5-0 on the sack fly from Honar. That's a great, uh, it's a great catch from Flores, but a great job there from Derigi. Even though it was a line drive that might have bounced, he's going to score all day long if it gets on the ground. So he's back at third, ready to run. And a good piece of hitting from Honar. High fastball up and away. And he's able to drive it out into left and drove in the run. Three runs in the seventh for Iowa. It's 5 nothing. Two outs. Runner at first is Raider Tello. Michigan's making a pitching change. We'll take the break with them. Iowa can smell the championship appearance that would be tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Hawks lead at 5 nothing. Pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at Opal.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. 
And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Three runs in the seventh for Iowa, and we've extended the lead 5-0 now in the bottom half of the inning. And the Hawkeyes inching closer to a championship appearance. It would be for Iowa uh, just the the fifth time that Iowa's been in the Big Ten championship game. Their most recent was in 2017. Uh, let's see, did Iowa win it How'd in 2017? In oh, yeah, the Hawks did. The Hawks did win the championship in 2017. So we're uh, just a few outs away and uh, from getting back to that one. New pitcher into the game for Michigan, though, a right-hander, John Torella. 11 appearances on the season with a start, 1-2 and two on the year, 9-22 ERA, 13 and two-thirds innings, 23 hits allowed, 19 runs, only 14 earned, 11 walks, though, to go with eight strikeouts. Opponents hitting 371. He's going to throw it. It's going to be low 90s more than likely with the fastball. He's got a curveball and a changeup. Uh, but he's, again, another one of those going to look a little bit like Louie. Over the top, big 12-6 curveball. But it just kind of kind of rolls up there, and it's got to start high. If he doesn't throw it up at the top of the zone, it's not going to be a strike. And you've got to get that fastball down. And you know, we talked about with the sidearm guy, you had to force his fastball up. Now with this one, you're going to have to force his fastball down a little bit more and drive it somewhere. Seegers will get the first look at him. Righty on righty matchup now. Breaking ball that had a lot of bump to it, but it stayed high. Raider Tello's the runner at first base. He's the uh, last guy to get a hit for Iowa. I guess Honar hit the sacrifice fly to bring in the latest run, but Tello's contributed to that. 1-0 pitch to Michael. Outside, ball two. This team's got some late inning magic in them, don't they, John? Once we get past that fifth, it's like the floodgates open up. Well, and it's it's the it's what happens when you take quality at bats over and over and over. The pressure applied is extreme by our offense this year. You continue to wear the other team's pitchers down because they have to keep making quality pitches or you're gonna get on base. And so even if even if it doesn't pay off early, there, there's a really good chance it keeps paying off late when you keep applying that pressure. Three balls, no strikes with two outs to Seegers. Michael Singleton scored in the sixth. That was a big run to make it 2 nothing. It's 5 nothing now. Here's a strike up and in, 3-1. and one. Hawks wouldn't mind adding a few more. Certainly after as long as Ty sat there, he's not coming back in. Christo's the one that's been flipping a ball in, down there. 3-1. High, ball four. Seegers drawing the walk, keeping the inning going. It's been a big one. Three runs for Iowa in the seventh. It's 5 nothing. Quick wrap on O'Halloran. One inning pitched, four hits, three runs were all earned. Gave up a walk, faced eight batters. So Hawks did a good job of uh, knocking around O'Halloran's bullpen. And now have a chance here to continue applying pressure and extend the lead. How about this Hawkeye, Kyle Huxdorf, standing in from the right side. High fastball, ball one. This guy's throwing us five pitches, four of them have been balls. Five, five, uh, six pitches, five of them have been balls, but this is what we talked about was, you know, breaking the chain, you know, making them, you know, bullpen game, you've got to have every guy be have a career day. 1-0 to Huck. That's in there for a strike on the inside portion, 1-1. One and one. They did a pretty good job with the first two guys. Mann and Horwittle were really good. Uh, Horwittle started to kind of run out of gas, turned to, turned to your Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, and, and he couldn't slam the door shut. 1-1 one, one to Huckstorf. Good cut, fouled it back, 1-2. A little mad at himself there. Saw the fastball and didn't quite get on it. And now you're asking a guy that's, you know, thrown third here. Um, to come in and, and be a dude. And it's just it's just not easy. That's right. that constant pressure again. Here's the one two to Kyle. Called third strike. A great breaking ball that started at Huckstorf's eyes, dropped right below the letters. 
Three runs for the Hawks in the seventh. It's 5-0 Iowa. We're back for the eighth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. No Visit way. U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. After the Hawks extend the lead to five to nothing with three in the bottom of the seventh, they'll turn to Will Christofferson here in the top of the eighth inning to see if they can continue to silence the Wolverine bats. Christos 20 has 25 appearances on the year. He's four and one with a save, 3.46 ERA, 26 innings, 15 hits, 11 runs. Just 10 of those have been earned. He's walked 12 and struck out 53 as opponents are hitting 160 against Will Christofferson. All right, Christo will come in, and you, you got to imagine he's tasked with getting the last six outs of this one. You would imagine so, and then, uh, you know, he did uh, such a phenomenal job on Thursday coming into the Indiana game and making sure that that, that game got settled down, and then the Hawks were able to, to pull away, and because of being able to pull away, they were able to get him out of the game uh, and, and kind of save, uh, you know, give him an opportunity to come back and pitch today. How about the final line on Ty? Absolutely. was just uh, just about to look that up. Ty, seven innings pitched, two hits, two walks, nine strikeouts, faced 25 hitters, um, and just did an outstanding job. Got really, really no particular trouble. They had two base runners on there in the seventh inning, got the double play to get uh, to get out of it. But otherwise, um, just, uh, just two swings for Michigan with runners in scoring position. Best start of the year for Langenberg? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nebraska was really good, but this was even better. Jonathan Kim is the batter. Christofferson with a strike on the outside corner. It's nothing in one. Ty is old reliable, isn't he? He is a gamer. Yeah. Oh, one pitch from Will. Ground ball left side. Tello gives it a look. It's a fair ball. Hopped over his head. Kim's digging for two. Peterson's throw to the bag is... Not quite in time. It's a leadoff double on a high chopper over Tello's head for Michigan in the eighth. That is a boy. Flores really does like his celebrations. Again, man, just take a quick glance at the scoreboard behind you, that big thing. But, you know, a little bit unlucky there as he just kind of bounced it over Tello. But saw that when Christo came into the game on, uh, on Thursday, he left a fastball in the middle of the plate and he got a hit. And so... You, know, you got to throw enough fastballs to keep everybody honest, but you don't have to throw them in the middle of the plate. Pinch hitter for Michigan now is Jimmy Obertop. Christofferson ready, first pitch just outside, maybe a bit low, looked awfully good from here. Boy, that ball, uh, I'm not sure where that missed, to be honest with you. Iowa up 5 nothing in the top of the eighth, runner at second base with nobody out. 1-0 pitch, that's definitely low and out, ball two. You know, got two innings, two and a third innings out of Christo on yep. Thursday. So this is kind of a, you know, if you're a traditional weekend, this would be Friday, Sunday. Mm, miss there, 3-0. and oh. Not something they've asked of him a lot. So be up to him now to buckle in here. Not getting that first pitch strike call is kind of throwing us out of whack here. The 3-0 pitch from Christofferson. Here it comes. That's at the knees. 3-1. and one. Battle back here, Will. And that pitch was basically the same spot. We've got a guy hitting 203. He's got some pop, but uh, you know, coming off the coming off the surgery, 
3-1. There it is again. Another strike. Three and two. I actually like the Michigan approach, though. If you're gonna, you're down five to nothing. He understands that. Hey, I, I don't. Uh, I can't hit a five-run home run, so I don't really matter much. You're trying to take the walk, making Christo throw strikes. Here's a three-two. Fouled back to the on-deck circle. We'll do it again. And does a nice job there. Expands the strike zone as now Christo's been able to get back into it. And that's the risk when you go ahead and take the take the three one pitch. Right handed hitter in the box. Christofferson ready with the three two. Called third strike. Ring him up. Out number one. Outside part of the plate. Overtop was really hoping. I don't know whether he was selling it or whether he believed it, but. Either way, fastball outside part of the plate. Christofferson dots it right out there, gets the call. Top of the order with Jeffress now. That was a big comeback from Will. Absolutely. You know, you, you mention it all the time. Hawks get three in the bottom of the seventh. What do you want in the top of yeah. the eighth? You don't put the first two runners on, that's for sure. Jeffress drives this to right. This is well hit. Frazier towards the wall out there in right, but he's got it at the track. Two down, runner will tag from second to third. Allowed out for Jeffress, but two down. Funny enough, he hit it far enough to right center where he kind of lost the uh, the scoreboard as a blocker. You know, you hit that a little bit more down the line. That's the the scoreboard blocks the wind. Yeah. You catch a little bit more break there, but instead he hit it out. The ball was nicely hit, but 342 is all it got out. Got traveled out there. Is, Christofferson put a good fastball on the inside part of the plate. Here's Flores. Runner at third for Michigan with two outs. Right-handed hitter against the right-handed Christofferson. First pitch, strike one. Will steps on the third base side of the rubber. He's ready for the 0-1 pitch to Flores. In the air, left center, Huxdorf moving back. He tracked it down. Kyle's got it. And all right, a leadoff double for Michigan, but that's it. Willie C does a great job for the Hawkeyes there. Five nothing as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Three outs away, my friend. Let's do it. All right, we're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Bottom of the eighth inning, Iowa five, Michigan nothing on semifinal Saturday. We're three outs away from an appearance in the championship game, but hey, let's add some more runs right now with a new pitcher coming into the game for the Wolverines. I'll go with the freshman righty, Kurt Barr. 11 appearances on the year with six starts. He's one and one, 437 ERA, 22 and two thirds innings, 20 hits, 12 runs, 11 earned, control issues, 19 walks, 17 strikeouts. Opponents hit him for 253 average. Fastball going to come up in the high 80s. He's got change up, curveball, sliders. He's got a little bit of everything, but really doesn't uh, doesn't control the spin very often, so you're going to see a lot of fastball, but he's one of those guys where if he hits the breaking ball, you're probably going to see it again. Okay. Good scout there on him. And for Iowa, it'll be Frazier, Moss, and then top of the order with Wilmus. You see enough from uh, Christofferson to bring him back out. I, I see a little bit of... Chaz Wheatley down there getting loose for Iowa. Well, I think the ideal would be you probably at 5-0. Actually, the ideal is you score a couple runs. 
Frazier takes a first pitch strike. Go ahead, John. Because, you know, you extend the lead, and then if Christo only throws an inning, he can probably throw tomorrow. If he throws two, you probably can't. The wind-up in the pitch to Frazier. That dropped in there for another strike, nothing in two. I mean, you are going to be sitting on. You'd still have Louie for tomorrow if you needed him. Uh, but, you know, having Louie and Christo would be a pretty nice uh, uh, two-headed monster. Sure. Frazier down in the count, 0-2 to lead off the eighth. That's low and out, ball one. Braden lays off of that. Because he saw the hit, the hit with the first curve ball, so he came right back to it. Barr taking his time, looking at that uh, wristband. Now steps on the rubber. Out of the windup. Here comes the one-two pitch to Frazier. Popped it up. Over to the left side, third baseman giving chase. Stanton near that tarp at the half wall. The shortstop goes right into that tarp. It's a foul ball finding the first row of fans down the line and left. Ouch. Great hustle from Jeffries there. Uh, Stanton didn't really, have, uh, didn't really have the right line on it, but Jeffries had a better angle, a better view coming to see it, but uh, just got into the first row and with the tarp blocking wasn't able to get all the way over there. Both those guys taking their time getting back to the defensive positions after that great hustle. Here comes another one two to Frazier. He pops this one up to right center. It'll be Pace and Wright who makes the play as Frazier hits the fly ball to his defensive counterpart. One down. Good fastball there. Out over the plate though. He'd love to see Frazier get on that one, but Frazier's just had such a weekend. We're going we're gonna to let him miss one with a 5-0 lead here. Yeah, he got uh, our scoring started today. He's technically got the game-winning run as it stands right now, scoring back in the third. Here's Cade Moss. Out of the windup, the first pitch is a strike on the outside corner to Moss. Again, good breaking ball there for a strike, so see if he tries to double up. That's in the dirt, bounced in front of the plate, one and one. His double up hasn't been very good. No, <laughs> you've <laughs> the, been right about it. The first one, the first pitch has been good for a strike. The second one hasn't been close and hasn't even been a good chase pitch. Moss today, one for two with a run scored. One, one pitch, good breaking ball there and it's a strike at the knees. Much better there. Two out all of, this guy throws or what? Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. Just that you're young. That's a meatloaf song. I just, know that one. Okay, I, just I, making sure. It's movies you don't watch. Movies, yeah. So outside to Moss, it's two and two. I'm a bit of an old soul, John. I think that's why we get along so well. So <laughs> I, I listen to some of that old music. Much more of an Eagles guy than, uh, than what some people listen to today. I'll just say that. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes, bases empty, one out for Iowa in the eighth. Here's the pitch to Moss. Fly ball to shallow center. This could be a tough play. Second baseman Burton will actually go back into the shallow outfield. He'll make the play two down. And this is exactly what we talked about early in the game about, you know, bullpen guys coming in and, and maybe they haven't thrown a lot. Scouting report says they don't, they don't throw the breaking ball for a strike a lot. He's been really good. Uh, you know, he's been... Uh, when I saw the line, saw him pop into the game, it's like, hey, maybe we'll just get five more runs and ended up here. Uh, but he's been been around the zone. He's thrown a couple a couple crazy ones you aren't going to swing at, but he's also dropped in a lot of nice breaking balls right in the zone. Ben Wilmus in the box, top of the order for Iowa. First pitch to Wilmus is inside for ball one. You know, I think most people had their views on how this game should go today you and me included maybe I, I won't speak necessarily for you but you know I thought okay with the storylines in place with Michigan's pitching and maybe I envisioned a, a certain way that this game should go but I'm almost glad it hasn't gone exactly that way the guys have had to stay locked in and, and through the first well eight innings so far and you got a few more outs to go but I'm impressed with how Iowa's played today. They've done a nice job, and again, full credit to full credit to Michigan's pitching staff. I mean, it was it was obviously uh, beat up and tired coming in, but they've really done a nice job. 2-0 to Wilmus, ground ball left side. Jeffress has it. He'll throw it on the run across to retire the side. Iowa goes down one, two, three, in the eighth. But we've just got three outs to go. 
Hawks five, Wolverines nothing. Top of the ninth coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. As Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online, and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. Top of the ninth inning, Iowa 5, Michigan nothing. The Hawkeyes will go to the bullpen, and they'll bring in the sophomore right-hander from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, the tall righty, Chaz Wheatley. He's made 12 appearances on the season with a 348 ERA, 10 and a third innings, eight hits, five runs, only four were earned, six walks, seven strikeouts, He's held opponents to a 205 batting average. As Chad looks to, Chaz looks to finish it off here for the Hawks. Just throw strikes, don't you know, give them anything. Make them earn it if they're gonna get anything off you, Chaz. We're gonna get our money's worth here because it'll be Burton uh, to lead things off. It'll be three, four, five uh, for the Wolverines. It'll be Burton, but then Pace, because remember Velasquez is taken out of the game. Pace will be the, the second hitter unless they make a change. Uh, but, you know, Pace is a 123 hitter as a freshman, so let's focus on Burton here and do our best to get him out to start the ninth. How about that? Yeah, start the inning off right, get the leadoff hitter. Michigan's Iowa's done a good job getting the leadoff hitters out so far for the most part. I'd like to continue that trend here for Chaz and make it a stress-free ninth. The hard-throwing right-hander is ready. Begins his motion. First pitch is inside, and it hit Burton. It's probably not exactly what we had in mind. That is not what we were calling for there. Okay, on to the next best thing, and a ground ball. <laughs> Hawks, Hawks up 5-0 in the ninth. Pace will come to the box. No, this is not Pace. Number 18. Going with a different hitter. They are bringing in Jordan Rogers. Now he's very different than Pace. Pace is a freshman. Rogers is a fifth year. Stands in from the right side. Wheatley out of the stretch now. Throws it low and out. Ball one. Just 20 at bats on the year for Rogers. Three hits. Burton with a short lead at first base. 1-0 pitch from Wheatley. Check swing. They will not send it down. It's low. Ball two. Take a deep breath here, Chaz. He's going to have an opportunity to do that as Coach McGrath is quickly out of the Iowa dugout making his way to the mound. Well, initially you like the idea to take Christofferson out of the game to, to hopefully preserve him for tomorrow. Obviously got to get there first, but I was up by five. Just need to settle Chaz down a bit. Well, and that's, uh, again, you, you talk about the, what I was trying to do to the chain. It's the, it's the same risk you run when you bring in another pitcher. Is You don't need Chaz to have a career day, but you, you need him to have a good one, and you need him to come in and, and do a job here. And Chaz is a strike thrower, so all he's got to do is stay in the moment and come out and, and throw some strikes here. He'll be fine, and that's... He's got this. He's got to trust his training. Mound visit wrapping up. And Wheatley will look to settle back in. Two balls, no strikes. Nobody out in the top of the ninth. Iowa 5-0 over Michigan. Trying to eliminate the Wolverines from the tournament. 2-0 pitch from Wheatley. 
That's low, ball three. That's a better pitch. Yeah. And if you've been around the zone for the first uh, for the first hitter or the first two pitches, you might get a you might get Rogers to swing. 3-0 delivery. That's in there for a strike. Found the bottom of the zone there, three and one. Right, and Christo in the last inning gave up the chopper double and then got three and oh on overtop and battled back nicely. So see if Chaz can find some. The three one. Inside corner, three and two. See if Chaz can find a way to battle back. Now you got a guy on his heels, maybe. Maybe he goes a little protect swing. Yeah. And four, Wouldn't this be something? Four, six, three or six, four, three. Which do you want? Start with the four. All right. Here comes a three, two from Wheatley. Low and out ball four. Spun out of that one. He was in good control there, throwing the, the first two pitches and then just overthrew that one. Just got to trust your stuff. You have to get off to a better start. I don't know if he's going to see another batter, though. Coach Heller's on the top step, going to the bullpen. Coach has seen enough, couldn't quite get it done for Chaz. And we will go to the bullpen. Looks like it's Luke. Looks like it'll be Llewellyn for the Hawkeyes, try to close this out. Michigan with runners at first and second, nobody out. Top of the ninth, Iowa five, Michigan nothing. We'll take a pitching change break. Come back right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. The Hawkeyes go to the bullpen in the top of the ninth. Runners at first and second for Michigan with nobody out. Hawks leading 5 nothing, bringing in Luke Llewellyn. Luke will make his 25th appearance on the season. He's 1-0 with three saves, 263 ERA, 27 and a third innings, 15 hits, 10 runs. Eight of those were earned. 22 walks and 39 strikeouts, holding opponents to a 161 batting average. Luke pitched an inning on Tuesday against these Wolverines. No hits, no runs. Did walk two, though. Struck out three. So we really don't need the two walks this time. Yeah, We've two, got those already. Two walks would bring home a run unless there's a double play in there somewhere. Llewellyn since, looks ready. Since they didn't make contact on him last time, that right. would make it difficult for the double play. <laughs> And this Michigan lineup looks a lot different than when we started, doesn't it? They've got a bunch of pinch hitters and substitutions in, this being one of them. They took Voigt out of the game, who was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. They're going to bring in Brandon Lawrence. He's a junior from California. He's listed as a switch hitter, but he's batting from the right side against right-handed Llewellyn, so that must be... Um, he, he must have switched just to the right side now. Here's the first pitch from Llewellyn. Dropped it in there for a strike. Good start from Louie. His 20 at-bats on the year. He is hitting 300, so he's got six hits, but um, struck out nine times. So get, a, get ahead, dominate the zone. Llewellyn comes in with a pressure situation with runners on as this is another strike. Goes with the breaking ball, this time a bit lower at the knees. Yeah, Nothing in two. Really did a nice job dropping that one in. See now if he... The spin mix is kind of what it says. Now look for maybe a fastball up and away. See if he can get a chase. Here's the 0-2. Just low. Right back to that breaking ball again. See if you just get him to swing over it that way instead. He started that. Uh, he started this at bat with a fifth floor breaking ball, then third floor, and then that one was on ground level. We'll see what he does here. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. The pause, the pitch from Llewellyn. Swing and a miss. Penthouse fastball from Louie. Got it. One away here in the ninth. 
Big time strikeout from Luke. One down. Hey, you started the metaphor. I just went with it. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, Lawrence got off the elevator, and uh, he was up there pretty high. He was. <laughs> All right, here's Marty. So Marty will get his first at bat. Came in for Van Remortal, right-handed hitter, tall kid. Runners at first and second with one out. Llewellyn out of the stretch. First pitch, breaking ball, low and out, ball one. Just missed a little, a little low and away there. Marty's wearing sunglasses while he's batting. 1-0 pitch from Llewellyn in the dirt. Good block by Moss. It's 2-0. Got Stanton on deck. Can we saw this pattern on uh, on Tuesday from Louis? Strikeout, walk, strikeout, walk, strikeout. Yep. Don't really have the space for that this time. 2-0 pitch from Llewellyn. Inside corner, strike one, two and one. Marty's a good hitter this year, 279. Fairly limited at bats, but has struck out 20 times in 61 at bats. Just below the knees on the hard fastball from Llewellyn. Caught some of the plate, but not enough to prompt a strike call, and it's 3-1. and one. Yeah, caught the plate. Must have been a little too low for Grady Smith. Yeah, it was down low on the replay. That one a little bit higher, and Marty fouled it back to the screen. 3-2, we'll have a full count. I think the track man here is just offset a little bit. It is. Some of them have looked pretty good, and then I've seen the replay on Big Ten Network, and it's not quite as uh, not quite as an obvious strike as as track man made it look like. Full count pitch from Llewellyn to Marty. On its way home. Another foul ball straight back. Just barely got a piece of it. What a great piece of hitting there from Marty. It looked like Llewellyn had that snuck past him. He just dropped the bat right on him. Fastball low and away, 93 miles an hour. Marty was able to fight it off. Hawkeyes a couple outs away from a championship appearance tomorrow afternoon. Here comes the 3 2 from Llewellyn. Swing and a miss. Two down. Went right back to the breaking ball. Louie in the 12 sixer. Hawks are one out away. The crowd will rise. What a comeback from Louie there. Here's Dylan Stanton, right-handed hitter. Runners at first and second for the Wolverines. Two down, Iowa five, Michigan nothing in the ninth. One out away from a championship to be played tomorrow. Llewellyn comes set. First pitch to Stanton, strike one. Fastball right across the middle of the plate. Deep breath from Louie. Shakes the shoulder, ready for the 0-1. Here it comes from Luke. Strike two, swing and a miss. What a breaking ball there. Sent Stanton yep. swinging way over the top. Iowa fans on their feet all around the stadium at Charles Schwab Field. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Llewellyn. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Cade sends it down to Dorigi for the third out. Hawks win. Iowa five. Michigan nothing. And the championship game will be painted with some black and gold tomorrow afternoon. What an outing from Ty Langenberg. Hello. Ty was fantastic. Put the Hawks in a spot. Didn't ever really have a big lead until the very end to pitch with, but what a great job from Ty. What a great job from the Hawkeye hitters staying on it. Shutout number six for the Hawkeye pitchers. And actually, oop, we got to five. I was going to say, we talked about that quite a few times about the, the opportunity to win. Got it done, though. Hawkeye score five, get the win. Coach Heller comes out of the handshake line with the Michigan coaches, and he fires up the crowd. Coach pumping them up, and a great crowd of those wearing the black and gold. There's no better color combination in the country, folks. And we'll be seeing the black and gold tomorrow. Championship Sunday awaits 
for the Hawkeyes. They'll take on the winner of the little mini series between Maryland and Nebraska. Maryland's got the advantage there. They're on the winner's side of the bracket. Nebraska would have to beat them twice. Mayhem and carnage. I, I, I was afraid of what you were going to say there because we don't want to say, you know, go Nebraska or anything nope. like that. We don't Mayhem say that. and carnage. But hopefully they have to play two games down there and, and either team has to burn through their pitching. Correct. All right, Hawks shut out Michigan today 5-0 to get to the championship game tomorrow. We'll take a break. We'll come back with post game right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Iowa takes care of business in the morning game. What a relief for the Hawkeyes to, to take it to Michigan and win it. And there's no if necessary game needed today. Iowa 5, Michigan nothing this morning. Not even quite to the afternoon yet. We get the rest of the day off, John. I, I joked with Coach Heller at the end of our pregame uh, interview. I said, Coach, I really like talking to you. you. You really help us out. You do a great job making us be well-informed on the broadcast. You're fun to talk to. But, man, I don't want to talk to you later today at 5. And the only talking I'll do to Coach Heller is maybe a fist bump, a high five, and a congratulations, Coach. Hi, and uh, you know, maybe we can... Uh Get him, get him off campus and have a little beverage to celebrate and get ready for tomorrow as we've now got, uh, well, what, 26 hours to kill before before game time and probably about we'll be arriving at the ballpark tomorrow about this time to play championship Sunday. Wow, how about that? What a run it's been. Let, let's, let's broaden things out. For Iowa athletics lately, I, I mean, what a season, what a year, a calendar year it has been. And if we could cap it off with a, with a championship here this weekend i mean what an incredible run it's been and baseball is doing its part baseball is certainly holding up its end is it's just uh, uh you know and obviously we've been been fortunate to spend so much quality time around uh around the whole baseball team but boy they've just uh, just got it done again total team effort today uh just working all the way through uh, just just trying to gather the stats up real quick here we've been joking about Spotty, uh, the spotty internet occasionally, but you know, limited to six hits today. But but again, maximized it. They got five runs off of it because they, you know, we talked yesterday. They couldn't quite get it done early, so the timely runs were hard to score. Uh, but today, Michigan was 0 for 11 with runners on base, 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. Iowa only 3 for 7, but those three were were important scored runs they had runner on third base with less than two out twice scored them up both times i always won three games we've played three games here we've won them all and i think we've won them all in different ways it's been when you look at the scoreboard maybe it's been that hey later in the game we've been productive offensively but every game has felt different john 100 percent. i mean you know with with Michigan, it was uh, uh, Michigan the first time. It was you know they got to O'Halloran and you know in the fifth after after some some tough starts, uh, but you were able to kind of get it and then were able to keep putting it on and, and finish that game up. You know Thursday Sennard was just fantastic early going. Iowa got people on but uh, couldn't couldn't get the big hit until until late, uh, and then today um, you know. Just again, gritted one out. You know, yeah. we, we we said it the other day. Just how do you get it done? And they they got the gritty and and they got it done. So that was kind of the uh, the part you're after. Five nothing. Iowa gets it done. Out hitting Michigan six to three today. Clean baseball played by both teams. Michigan did have one error, but 
Uh, really nice job by the Hawkeyes. The pitching was what it needed to be today and, and still have some arms in the tank tomorrow for the championship. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll be joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, oh my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa blanks Michigan today, 5-0, advancing to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, congratulations on that win. Where do you want to start today? Well, I think you start with Ty. Um, you know, just I said this to Sean before the game, and, you know, Ty's always showing up in these moments. Ty's always, always showing up, you know, when kind of the stakes are pretty high. You know, he did it last year uh, in an elimination game. And I watched him do it in high school. And he was a sophomore in high school. He, Urbandale won a state title. And it was because Ty came in in the third inning and calmed the game down and got him to the seventh. And, and so I knew we were going to get a really good version of Ty. And we certainly did that. You know, the first inning, I think he worked through a little bit of nerves and, and ends up getting through that inning. It was 22 pitches or some 3-2 counts. But once he got the, down uh, through that he really settled in it's two base runners until the seventh um and then we work out of that with an um, unbelievable double play turn with michael and sam in the middle i mean that's a big time play uh, michael just continues to to play shortstop at an unbelievably high level um and so you know you, it's always the tone's always set with the guy on the mound specifically when you're the home team and and ty certainly did that and you know offensively it was just a tough day man they did a good job you know with pitchers down the line the first guy was kind of effectively wild he never really got good pitches to hit and it was all over the place and then the next kid came in the sidearm kid and just filled the zone up we were 0-2-1-2 the whole time and any pitcher who continues to do that uh, and be in, in advantage counts and win the advantage counts it's tough offensively but we were able to just stick with it and, and do enough there with some big hits uh, obviously out of Raider and, and Huck there the big two out uh, the big two out hit that that kind of broke the ice a little bit and it allowed us to relax we were really happy for Brennan Derigi to get that single there in the seventh that that brought home some more runs it, you know, he hasn't had the best week, but then we saw him intentionally walk PD, and we thought, oh, this could be a good time for Brennan. Yeah, and they did that a couple times. And, and you know, probably in the current situation, the way PD's going, the way Brennan's going, you know, it's probably a, a, the right call. And, you know, Brennan's just, he can get hard on himself inter in, internally, and, and he's fighting a little bit, and um, he's just got to go play. And, and he cares so much and all those types of things that, you know, sometimes that can work against you. And you just got to go play. And, um, yeah, happy, happy he gets one through the hole there, and a lot of times something like that is what gets you going. We don't want to make one guy any bigger than the team or anything, but we had talked to Brennan a little bit uh, this week, and you know his experience at Wofford, he got to the championship type of game multiple times, and he never won it, and then never got to the NCAA tournament either. Uh, he joked that uh, he's not going to believe it till he sees it. Well, we can make that thought a reality tomorrow with a win yeah you take it out of anybody else's hands right and you talk about that all the time in sports you know don't leave it up to somebody else and um crazier things have happened but you're certainly feeling good about where you're at and um you know you get a chance to play for a championship every you you know i got to do this as a player and, and it's something you remember all the time you know we haven't we haven't been in one since 17 but but three out of the last six years we've had a chance to win a championship in a tournament and um you know that what else could you ask for and we'll have a great crowd you know 9 a.m games tough and we still had a great crowd but two o'clock game tomorrow let's fill this thing up and uh, let's be loud and um we're going to have a great effort out of our guys i know they're going to show up ready to go but just really happy they get a chance to do that and 
and some things have to go your way. You know, when you're in a tournament setting, you know, you kind of need one of these games where it just feels like, you know, I passed Matt Henderson and Scott Brickman on the way up here, and I just like, yep, nine innings of uphill. Uh, that's what it felt like offensively, and sometimes that's just the way it goes. Um, and you need to figure out a way, which we certainly did, and um, great to see, and, and uh, just really excited that they get a chance to go do it. Well, I know you're going to want to get back to the hotel and start prepping for the next team, but we're not going to know who it is. And, and selfishly, I hope we don't know who it is until a little bit later. Not We don't have it decided in this first game. What do you think, Coach? Uh, I, would, I would like 20 to 30 innings uh, <laughs> of, of constant traffic to the mound. Uh, and, um, yeah, we'll see, obviously, two really good teams uh, going at it here and both really good offenses. So whoever we have tomorrow, um, we'll have our hands full. We're going to have to play well. And, and like I said, hopefully they, they have to go at it here for, for an extended period of time. And certainly that was a big, a big deal uh, today to not have to play that second game. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get it over yeah. with. Rest, guys. Um, and we should have a full deck. It was nice we didn't have to use Whitlock, um, which was good. And, and he'll be you know pretty full rested. And then we'll just kind of see how we'll piece the rest of the game together if Marcus has the ability to start and go a little bit. We don't know. That's stuff we'll kind of talk about here um, you know, over the course of the afternoon. But uh, just really happy for our guys, really happy for uh, the Hawkeyes and, and our fans, and let's go get one tomorrow. Congratulations, Coach. We'll talk to you before you. the championship game. Thank you. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our postgame show from Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. Iowa 5, Michigan nothing. We're back with highlights and a wrap-up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Cellular, we believe in having healthy relationships with our phones so we can have better relationships with each other. Introducing Us Mode, a way to set your phone for less distraction and deeper connection. So dinner can sound less like this and more like this. What'd you learn today? The sauropod was the tallest dinosaur ever. Oh, my goodness. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online, and we'll help set your phone to Us Mode, even if you're not a customer. U.S. Cellular, the 5G network built for us. See uscellular.com for details. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. The Iowa Hawkeyes eliminate the Michigan Wolverines today and move on to the championship game tomorrow. It's been three games, three wins for Iowa to get there. Let's relive the highlights from the most recent one, a 5-0 victory over Michigan. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Langenberg up to five strikeouts through two innings. He's got a great defense behind him, but he hasn't had to use him too much yet. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Langenberg got him. He threw that one low and in. Great pitch from Langenberg, two down. No balls and a strike to Huxdorf with two outs. He swings at the first pitch he sees, sends it to center, and it's over Kim's head all the way to the wall. Seegers scores. Huxdorf, he's digging for three. Kyle, the kid, does it again. 2 nothing. Hawks. Kyle Huxdorf loves this ballpark. That's the same ball. If Honar hits that one on a little bit more of a line, we've already got the runs in the hit. In the seventh, one ball, two strikes. Langenberg ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Ground ball to Seegers at short, gloves it, flips to second for one, on to first, double play! How about that? Ha ha! Seegers, Honar, Derigi, and we get out of the jam in the seventh. What a hard hit ball right up the middle. Seegers stuck with that. We saw a hop last night in the Michigan State game that bounced over Va Bradenberg's head. Seegers stays with it, catches it up on a big bounce, fires to Honar, who makes a great turn. We're stretching 2 0 Hawk. Here comes the 2 1 from O'Halloran. On the ground, left side, and through into left field. Here comes Moss around third. Hill scores, standing up. Derigi, ha ho, yes, three nothing. Hawks. Ground ball through into right. 
Peterson scores. Derigi slams on the brakes at third. Good thing he did. It was a great throw by Pace in right. Tello, time. He adds to the lead. Four nothing. Hawk. Runners at the corners with one out. Here's the pause. Here's the pitch. Line drive into left. Flores coming forward. He dives. He makes the catch. Derigi will tag. Derigi will score. Iowa 5 0 on the sack fly from Honar. The pause, the pitch from Llewellyn. Swing and a miss. Penthouse fastball from Louie. Got it. One away here in the ninth. Iowa fans on their feet all around the stadium at Charles Schwab Field. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Llewellyn. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Cade sends it down to Derigi for the third out. Hawks win. Iowa five. Michigan nothing. And Iowa punches their ticket to the championship game tomorrow. It'll be Maryland or Nebraska. Quite uh, two opposite ends of the, the spectrum when it comes to the regular season matchups with those. We swept Nebraska, but dropped two or three to Maryland. Uh, I don't really care who we see tomorrow. This team seems pretty locked in. I just hope that maybe Maryland and Nebraska have to play two games, John. Right. <laughs> You'd just like to see them play a long time today. You know, I used carnage and mayhem, Marty mentioned uh, you know 20 25 30 innings whatever it takes to uh, to decide who gets to who gets to show up at the ballpark tomorrow to, to face off with the black and gold it's been a fun uh, week it'll be a lot more fun if we take care of business tomorrow let's finish it on the right note John yeah we lose the uh, we lose the double elimination tomorrow is is winner take all doesn't matter if it's uh, doesn't matter if either team shows up with a loss it's everybody starts from the same square you just have to win a game first pitch tomorrow is at two o'clock John and I We'll begin our pregame coverage on the Hawkeye Radio Network at 1.30. We hope you join us. It's been a fun ride. Let's finish it strong tomorrow, Hawkeye Nation. All right, that'll do it for our coverage of Hawkeye baseball today. Iowa taking down Michigan and advancing to the championship game tomorrow at 2. For my great board op down the line, Michael, excellent job as always. Great to have you back, Michael. Let's do it again tomorrow. My great broadcast partner, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Charles Schwab Field in Omaha this afternoon. Iowa 5, Michigan nothing. We'll talk to you tomorrow afternoon. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeyes Sports Network.